allow me to introduce our first speaker of the day, um, who's, uh, who is going to be Deca William. And uh, there is something unique <laughs> about this. Eh? You see, um, like firstborns, even before they mature, they are already given responsibility. So Deca is also going to double us as a graduate, but also as an MC. <laughs> So, but first, let's hear from him, a speech from Deca. So you may know him, but I'll still just go through his profile. So Deca William is the 2019 winner of the Young uh, Public, Prof uh, Public Relations Professional of the Year Award by Public Relations Society of Kenya. This was a big news eh, in the media. I hope you saw it. <laughs> He's an all-round communicator with considerable experience in designing and implementing <laughs> I can see it's red here, yeah? <laughs> and implementing communication strategies for intergovernmental organizations, government ministries and state departments, multinationals and not-for-profit organizations, uh, including Google, Comesa, European Union, World Bank, UNDP, and African Union, um, among others. So currently, DECA works with the UN uh, Environment um, just a moment. Uh, Deca works with the UN Environment Program and he supports implementation of the communication strategy for the Western Indian Ocean Region Convention. <laughs> He's a writer of humor, a big data enthusiast and a web de developer. He's also a singer in the choir, though he doesn't do it very well. Eh? Though poorly, I doubt that because I we go to the same church with Deca and he, every time he's always the actually the priest is always mentioning him. So I think here we may need to re revisit Deca. So help me welcome Deca uh, by a clap, even if you're muted. Eh? Just clap for Deca. And Deca, <laughs> yeah, he, he advised all of us to put our videos on so that we can be able to see each other. So over to you, Deca, and congratulations in advance. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. My theme today is very Kenyan, as you can see. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, sometimes it's quite hard eh, to be the person who begins. And so maybe I'll even make it shorter and perhaps to set a place against the rest of us. Here I am. During four weeks of pregnancy, the ball cells is splitting into the embryo. That is your future child, yeah? And the placenta. So the baby neutral tube, which is the building blocks of the spine, the brain, and the backbone is already formed. The amniotic sac, the fluid forming into a protective cushion for the baby, now starts to be realized here. And that is four weeks of pregnancy. Why four weeks for sure? Four weeks of this class have been the best uh, formation period for my passion. And I believe even for you writers as well. So the four weeks that we've had, it shall bear the work of four decades later on, perhaps even four centuries. For me, they shall read my name, not as a title, but as a byline. Uh, thanks to this class. Thanks to you writers and classmates uh, for being the best team I'll ever wish for in a class that encourages you to push on. And thank you to the tutors we've had. Professor, we still call her Professor Omoa Mbara. Lucas, uh, the very tough one. Kinyanjui Kumbani and everyone else who has presented um, insightful content to us here. Let us grow together, but also in love. Thank you, Deka. Okay, there should be a clap after that. <laughs> I think we need to accept earlier. We should switch on our mics and, you know, <laughs> clap for you. Thank you very much, Deca, and congratulations. Your speech is very short and very sweet. <laughs> and with that, I welcome you now to lead the session. Thank you so much, Gabriel. In the same pace, I'll move on to um, our next classmate who is here and graduate today, Mary Adiambo. For those of us who are interacting with Mary for the first time or even still knowing her, Mary handles communication within Writers Guild and more particularly we know her from the work she does with the social media uh, Writers Guild which is so excellent. She's also responsible for the generation of content and the fruitful engagement of stakeholders through Writers Guild online platforms. 
Hey, did you know that Mary is actually a first class honors? Yeah, top of a class for sure. Graduate of foods, nutrition, and dietetics. Mary, do you have some advice for us? Uh, those of us who are still not <laughs> getting our diet the right way. She also has a certificate in Mandarin Chinese, Xiong Shua, and a passionate advocate of women's rights. Uh, she hopes to write more and uh, create sustainable change through writing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Adiabo. <laughs> hey, what an introduction. <laughs> okay, I'm nervous, but uh, I'm going to power through. So, hi everyone. Greetings from Nakuru. I'm, I'm talking to you from Nakuru. Today, I'm happy, healthy, and hopeful, and I'm so excited to be graduating. So, um, I will applaud my people, but they are very intimidated by uh, what, what is it, so, social media and anything uh, computer related, <laughs> but they say hi. Uh, okay, I'll also keep, uh, I'm a millennial, so I'll keep my speech short and sweet. So, uh, it's been a journey. I don't think I was here for the very first class, but I joined in between, but it's been such a journey. We've learned about social media and how to get followers and how to use uh, social media for your writing. Uh, I was there for Lucas's savagery. <laughs> uh, we learned so much from that, um, for the scandals that we've been having. <laughs> and uh, generally, I'm so happy to be graduating. I've learned so much from you. You guys, there's a camaraderie among us that uh, is so... I don't know, inspiring, and it's so good uh, to be, to have met all of you. I hope to keep in touch, and uh, I'll miss you guys so much. Uh, I'll end with the famous words of uh, Kylie Jenner. She says that she takes uh, 500 pictures before she picks one to post on her social media. So don't worry. If uh, your first few tries in something do not work, it, it's coming. Yeah, thank you. And one more clap for Mary. Uh, thank you. That's a nice one. Short and sweet. I like this pace. I think we are going to be done in the next <laughs> 12 minutes. So our next uh, graduate today is Zan Mburugu. And from the class, we know her as Miss Mburugu. So you know Anne is a young lady eh, who would like to change the world through writing. Being a trainee accountant in a very busy insurance environment. Oh my God, we all know how that environment looks like. So it has enabled her to meet and interact with people from all walks of life, you and me for sure, from whom she learns. She hopes that uh, through writing, she will empower and even foster empowerment, especially among the youth who are the future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the way uh, from the other county, Anburugu, Karibu. Thank you. I think Anne, uh, she's reached out to me. I think she's having connection problems. So we could give her a short while, then she'll be with us. No worries. We'll come back to her and we hope that she'll even prepare a longer speech now that we've skipped her that first. Um, next, we all know her once again. So from one uh, accountant to another one now who is even more certified. So Wairimo Gatungi is a certified uh, public accountant, uh, counseling psychologist uh, training and she's also received counseling psychologist training and she's also a writer being passionate about teen mentorship and discipleship for sure she's a blogger who enjoys sharing her life experiences through writing uh, she has authored one book these broken pieces which was published last year that is 2019 ladies and gentlemen let us welcome the inspirational wairimo gatungu karibu wairimo uh, Sandy Sana, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, Rimo Gadongo is my name. I have enjoyed being part of this class for the last five weeks. And uh, the thing I have loved most about this class is because it's the first online class I am doing. So there was no pressure to speak. There was no pressure to answer questions. You could easily hide behind the keyboard and that was enough. So yeah, it has worked perfectly for me. I have enjoyed the interactions on WhatsApp, on the group chat, and just not being in a space where I was pressured to do things. Uh, I would like to appreciate uh, uh, the panelists. We have had one, Mr. David Wawero, whose passion you could actually see as he spoke and uh, 
listened to us he spoke he inspired us a lot and then the other week we had miss omwa the god's child on the run uh, we are waiting for that book to be published in kenya for us to buy it you inspired us a lot and then we had the brutally sweet lecturer mr lucas a uh, personal favorite of mine i have loved uh, interacting with him and the passion he has had for correcting our work and, and editing our work and i am looking forward to working with him and then after that we had one mr kenyanjui kombani he was also very passionate about publishing and uh, i love how he ha- he taught us how to use social media to market our work and also to let people know about uh, writing and last but not least we have had mr gabriel he's been with us throughout moderating the classes pressuring us sometimes and honoring us into doing assignments and doing the right things uh, thank you very much mr gabriel and uh, also patricia who has been the class admin thank you for the timely communication and for the follow ups that you have done and to each and every one of us who is graduating today i appreciate us for the journey we have walked together and i am looking forward to one day physically meeting all of you i would like to introduce someone very 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 special to me uh my english teacher from high school she has not yet joined but she will be with us i will let you know when she comes in but i have one of my mentors he's called mr david kebani he's together with us today is the person who he's almost always the first person who reads my articles before i send them for class assignments or before i do the blogs he's the first person who reads those articles he's the first person who read my book and he's the one who did the forward so mr david kemani kindly just say hi and i'll be done Well, we are waiting for Mr. Kimani to say hi to us. Um, yes, here you are. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for, for the invitation. Um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you guys have done. I'm proud of you for going through this it's been just amazing just to read even what is going on and just listening to Remo and the what she's been going through her experience in this class i'm very excited and i'm looking forward to the, what is coming out of this not just from her but from the rest of the guys uh, so for everyone who stood with her and walked her through this god bless you guys and to the rest of the of the graduate graduates bless you have a great future ahead god bless you guys Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, uh, silence means we are going to proceed. So we shall proceed to Sharon. And Sharon, as Sharon gets ready, let's clap uh, for Irima once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, that was inspirational. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, our next graduate is Mubada. She mass communication. She also has interest in writing, and she runs a personal blog. You know it, Sharon Guada dot address dot com. Sharon has published on various newspapers uh, outlets, including like the. She's currently the empowerment officer of the Writers Guild in Mombasa, where she encourages and guides other writers to write even more. She's a book enthusiast and hopes to get published someday. She's also a freelance editor, mostly for private blogs. Ladies and gentlemen, Sharon. So much, um, everyone. First of all, I would like to recognize the presence of a friend. His name is Victor Odiambo. Maybe he could just wave. 
um yeah he's a friend and uh, i'm so happy that he's here to witness this for my speech i wrote it and i would just like to read it to keep it short and simple i'm i'm elated to be here not only to address my fellow graduates and alumni of this course but to be able to it from the comfort of my home a year ago if somebody told me graduating via google with, without being coaxed is possible i would have probably squinted at them or even smacked their face but here we are how times change First and foremost, I would like to thank Gabriel Dinda. Without him, there will be no Writers Guild Kenya, hence any of this. He has not only provided readers and writers a platform for growth, but he has gone out of his way to follow individuals to ensure their dreams with regards to the same are achieved. I would also like to thank our tutors, the Swiss Mr. Waweru, the joyful Mr. Moa, the relatable Mr. Kombani, and last but not kind, the amazing Mr. Lucas. And I mean that with a lot of love and respect because I have learned that sometimes it is not until we receive the hardest blows that we learn. To my mostly adorable but sometimes scandalous classmates, thank you for making this course one of the most fun and rewarding experiences of my life. I could never ask for better humans than you. And I pray that going forward, the bond will continue helping, will stay, and as we continue helping each other grow into writers that the world is yet to celebrate. This course was meant to prepare us to what comes next, which begs the question, what comes next? A question whose answer I believe each of us has at heart. But all in all, I hope one day you will look back and say that in June 2020, when the world was rotting away owing to COVID-19, you did something good for yourself. For me, as far as my enthusiasm for books goes, all I can say is that the girl with the books will one day become the woman writing them. Thank you. That's my short and sweet. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Thank you. We want the girl to become the one writing them. Can I pick them and just switch the gender so that it's the guy with the book? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and so, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you. And, and the key word that comes out of this place is scandalous classmates. And so we introduce our next scandalous classmate. Uh, Mr. Kimaru uh, Kokota. So Kimaru is a student at Moi University, did you know, where he chairs the Writers Guild Kenya Moi University chapter. He's a writer whose words have won awards for sure, the greatest being including a forthcoming short anthology. He has also written and directed plays for the Kenya National Drama Festivals that became a great success in the region they represented. He's currently the editor in chief of the Moi University Press Club. He has worked with knowledge such as Zeraki Analytics. He also shared. He also shares some of his writings on his personal blog and even social media pages. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the guy with a big voice, <laughs> Mr. Kimaru Kokota. Okay, apologies. I am not able to turn on my video, but you can just put up with me. Okay, I'm so happy to be here today, and I think I'm the one with the longest graduation speech, so I don't know how I'm going to read it. But before I continue, my friend is here, is called Peter Chege. I think you should just say hi before I continue. Okay, they yes, said hi at the comment section. So I'm going to read my my speech. Fellow Kenyans, most graduation speeches are at a risk of becoming motivational speeches. But I don't blame anyone. In a world which constantly challenges the ideals of hope, words of motivation feel like plunging your hand into water. All you feel is a caress. The motivation part is in fact what most people look out for. And when you're a graduate like me today, it is the section which your fingers ache most, ache to write most. As I write this, there's an undertow of motivation that secretly seduces me, that secretly seduces me into turning this into just another graduation speech. I can feel ripples from my heart on the ebb, slowly drawing lines of happiness on my otherwise stern face. My hands are twitching just by imagining how this piece would have been 
it wouldn't have been boring anyway. So let me read how motivating some of it would have, would have been. I would begin at the apex of motivation by stating that each, inside each one of us, there's a sleeping tiger, a sign of greatness, which requires a peculiar awakening. It would be so inspiring to say that this cause awakened my tiger and that you should all consider it your mission to awaken your sleeping tigers. I will not forget to add that this course was not easy. In fact, so hard was it that I contemplated dropping out. Once when Mr. Lucas Wafula announced, announced to the class with a smiling face that my story had no story. And twice when a course mate, while reading aloud, my piece for scrutiny paused and exclaimed, what the hell is this? But I didn't quit. And in the, and, but I didn't quit. And in the combined vigor of Ken Gomeri and Pepe Minambo, I would proudly add, Winners never quit. But that's not how I left my graduation speech to read. This is it. When I first received the call that I had been accepted to the program, I sighed. I was literally groaning in self-doubt. I hadn't written a word in three months, and some strangers on Facebook were getting concerned. But here was, a gra here was an admission to a writing program. Ah, my existence was finally becoming important, I said to myself. I had watched as important meetings were held, bookshelves in houses used for high intellectual purpose and classes conveyed. Yet, I merely existed in the periphery of this newfound online reality. When the classes began, I looked forward to the cl classes with a virgin sense of accomplishment. It was a stroke of pride at first, a giant step in showing that I too had joined the bandwagon. But when the class began, I knew this was it, the last piece that completed the jigsaw. I had doubted myself so much because I hadn't felt like I am a writer, just an imposter. I had finally found a home. I had finally felt like a writer. It is that which I am wholly grateful for this course, the facilitators, the editors, the publishers, the writers, and the amazing writers I met here, very scandalous indeed, whom, without their inputs, I doubt if the culmination of this would be this great feeling. It is true what they say. People may forget what you said, but they will never forget what you made them feel. Thank you all for making me feel like a writer. I believe when I finally write my book, which I always love to describe as the greatest Kenyan novel, I will remember all this and say, I'm glad I went through the Write Your Passion program. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, at some point, I thought that uh, Mr. Kimaru is challenging us to always consider the length next time so that it's longer and sweeter. We didn't know that even long can be sweet. We always say short and sweet, but that was long and sweet. And again, the word scandal popped up. So you know it's time to introduce the next scandal. Our next scandal is Joy, Joy Oguru. So Joy is a music journalist who uses her words and voice to spread the gospel of Kenyan music. She is a, free, a freelance writer, event host, and social media manager. She has five years experience in creating content around music and entertainment. In 2018, she bagged the best online podcast award at the inaugural Sondek Awards. And was having the best entertainment blog At the Bloggers Association of Kenya, you call it Kenya. She currently contributes to various websites, including Tangaza Magazine. Her mission is to see Kenya music and art appreciated at home and internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, Joy Ruguru Karibu. Thank you, William, for that introduction. Um, I'm glad to be here today with all of you. Um, to be honest, I never imagined I'd ever, be, I'd ever attend an online graduation. I thought after my campus studies, th that was it. And I also didn't think I'd be part of like your passion. I remember um, one week to the course, Gabriel had told me about it. He even sent me the information about it. And... Um, I told him that I would read what he sent, 
and I would share it with other writers I, I know. So I did read what he, he sent me, but I did not share because I'm one of those last minute people who wait till the last minute to do something. So by the time I, I, sh I would have shared, it would have been too late. Um, and but I think maybe there's a reason why I did not share it. And I remember two days through the calls, he called me, he asked me, so will you join us? And um, my answer was, I, I don't, I, it's nice, it looks nice, but you know how we say it, it looks nice, but I don't think this time um, I'd do it. And I think for me, the reason was because I saw myself as an online writer, you know, I write on blogs, on websites, but writing a book is not something I envision myself doing. So I did not, I felt like writing a passion for someone else. But Gabriel was um, so convinced that it was for me and he, he was very passionate. And eventually I said yes, because persistence pays. And now here we are six weeks later. And um, I think for me, the biggest takeaway of you know taking the risk and being in this class is I've learned that to take writing seriously, you know, from the time you start um, creating the story to editing it thoroughly, and even to publish in it, whether it's in a book or in a blog. And I have this to thank the trainers who showed up. Each trainer showed up on a Saturday from 9 to 12 p.m., giving us three hours of their time, you know, ready with PowerPoint presentations, very well-researched notes, and they gave us a wealth of knowledge. Um, I'd also like to thank my fellow classmates, it will not have been a fun and interactive class if it was not for you. And I know that waking up at 8 a.m. every Saturday when you slept at 2 a.m. the previous night is not very easy. So congratulations to you for being consistent and doing the work. Um, also, thank you to my friend um, Wendy Ndaki, who, is, who attended my graduation. Um, I didn't give her an invite to my campus one, but I'm glad she, I gave her to this one and she showed up. <laughs> and, most, and finally, I want to thank Gabriel Dinda and Writers of Kenya for believing in me, for giving us this space to grow as writers, to feel connected, and even just to convince me to do this course and to meet all of you. And um, now with this, with this, with this course and with this graduation, I actually, I not only have the power to read books, but I actually have the books to read. <laughs> so thank you, Writers Guild, for this opportunity. And, you know, after now that I look back, um, I feel like you know maybe now I can I can actually write a book very soon so thank you wow uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for that joy let's give joy a clap and and joy has brought to light yeah it's something i've always wished to, to to complain about universities always tell us that you, here we give you the power to read and write and 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 Nobody writes after that, nobody <laughs> reads even better after that because it was all about the technical work you learned in the university. But this class for sure uh, gives you that power to read and above all uh, to write. Okay. I think this is the group that is, grad we, it's a graduation. At some point uh, I'm supposed to talk to them. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. That is coming from Rehema Zuberi's microphone and we won't hide we people. So it to I'll call you. Um, so I know Griffins has the ability to mute everyone behind the scenes and has, he has done that. I'll introduce him. He is our next uh, scandalous graduate today. Griffins Otieno, as you most know him, is a senior project manager at Recreation Power.
and a performing poet with exceptional energy for sure. You love him when he does that. He loves to inspire, entertain, and educate through content and spoken word. A powerful and fulfilling, propelling servant leader, Griffin spends every Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Saturday working with the vulnerable children at Majimazuri. Majimazuri.org is the website in Madari for sure. He loves to mentor them on art and is always on the lookout to connect them with others who can inspire them in other areas. Ladies and gentlemen, a powerful poet, Griffin's Line. Karibu. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm so happy and excited today to be here. First of all, let me thank God for giving me this chance and for ensuring that I started this course and completed it. I feel so privileged because uh, here I have so many people who are my friends, people I've known for so many years, starting with Gabriel, we went to the same high school, Deca, we went to the same high school. I have Sharon here, we were with from the same estate, I've known her for the longest time possible. Another one here, we have Annie Odeka, who was in the last class, and she happens to be my family friend and also assistant. I'm so happy to see her today. I think uh, there's a poem I wrote for my sister way back, and it is a poem I promised that I will perform on my graduation. And I think this is the best opportunity to use my time to do that. So, dear sister, I am graduating as a powerful poet today. See yourself past that. Learn how to be perfect if you want to be like them like us but first write to me when all is done that you have excelled marvelously portrayed your brilliance stemmed out strong like the graduates like the griffins with wits of clinton sister remember in the beginning light was separated from the dark if it is so that the dark was dominant then we are back in time when the dark ruled no change other than destruction i repeat Seek perfection, evaluate your reflection, meditate on your destiny. Life is not death, but death is life. Live to your worth when they still breath, sister, little twinkling star. Let not a hungry hyena seduce, confuse, use, abuse, reduce you. Hope you know the stories of our mothers. Reason you have to stand tall and justice to yourself. Be yourself. Play not with that in your heart. At the right time, please seek love. And above all, dear sister, if you want to be the top cream, you must know the supreme. Let not the modern holies lead you to holy plantations where faithful sow seeds of figures. Your faith is your choice. So is your dress. Be among the chosen. Stay safe with the chosen. And as I pen off, I want to let you know that I still write. Of late, been turning pages into stages, going places, meeting beautiful faces. I will never give up. Always wake up with my talent in my brain. When the sun shines or the rain, this is the life, the life I live. This is the life, the life I lead. I've got nothing to fear and I've got nothing to worry because I've got my family all behind me and I've got my God all behind me. See, by the almighty God, I was given a brain, a brain not to drain, a brain I will train to remain always to gain. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all the sweet trainers and the amazing, amazing, scandalous 2020 class. Thank you. I know for quite this is what we do, but this time around we'll clap. Let, let, let us make it, a, just put it somewhere at the back of your mind that as soon as somebody finishes, you just have to clap. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you for that, Griffiths. As I was listening to the poem from Griffiths, I thought I would capture some nice lines, but then when you listen to this, oh, there's something again comes. It's not now supreme, now it's graduant Griffiths. Did you see what he did there? Alliteration? <laughs> okay, I have forgotten. <laughs> no, I have not forgotten. This class is about scandals, and that's how we propel scandals. All the way from Chuka, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Marion Jepkos Gay. 
Marion is the chairperson of the Writers Guild Chuka, a chapter of Writers Guild Kenya, aimed at refining the writing passion for students into the writing profession. She is a poet and a writer who shares her writings in, in, in her personal blog. Marion believes that writing and art in general has the potential to make the world a better place as it brings love, laughter, and happiness. She believes that writing fosters friendship and family. She's an undergraduate student of environmental science. Ladies and gentlemen, Marion Zepkos Gay. Very good. Thank you, Deka. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm so nervous. But before I start, I'd like to introduce you to my favorite person. She's here today. Her name is Marcy, and I would like her to say hello. Marcy, would Marcy, you please say hello? As, as Marcy is saying hello, you know you didn't apologize for not switching on your camera. But let's wait for Marcy to make that video. Uh, Marion, I think Mas is giving you all the privilege to even introduce her as you go ahead with your speech. Okay, I'll go ahead. Mas is my auntie and uh, she's my favorite person. She's my mentor. So for today's graduation, it is my first. I have never graduated before. And I feel so happy to be part of this class. And I have a speech. I'll read it. Uh, today I'm so happy to see your bright faces and I never graduated before so this is my first. I'm bringing gratitude and humility and I would like to thank God for giving me this chance. He is the author of all. I'd also like to thank the teachers that led us through this Rachel Your Passion class starting with the passionate Dr. Wawin, Omo Ombara, the queen of positive vibes, Lucas, the king of brutality that is also filled with love and Kinanji Kumbani, the banker who writes. I'd like to thank you, my scandalous classmates. You made everything beautiful. This class was full of life. I found love, laughter, happiness. I have built friendships with you guys and I have found a writing family here. I'd like to thank my auntie Marcy because she's here today and my dad in absentia. And uh, before I continue, I'd like to thank Gabriel, the father of Writers Guild Kenya. When I think of Gabriel, I think about Abraham in, in the Bible because I think Gabriel is the new father of nations because he has fathered very many writers and he's continuing with his work. And uh, I know nations will be blessed through him. He's the, he has the purest, the purest and the kindest heart. When I want to define passion, I just think of Gabriel and boom, I have the definition. I'm confident in all of you, my scandalous classmates, and the coups we had last. Oh, success is waiting for us. So I'd like to remind you that this graduation is like a marriage. It marks the end. It marks the end of being a bachelor and a spinster. And... Uh, it brings it uh, brings forth forth an. Uh, this marks the end of uh, being a bachelor and a spinster, so it's kind of a marriage, and everyone is looking forward to us having and sharing forth great children. That is in terms of book, books, and other literary materials. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Uh, is it just me or we've lost you? Thank you. I, I can see your mic is still moving. Mm. Asante, let, let's give Marion a clap for sure. You know, as soon as you mentioned, as soon as you mentioned that this marks the end of being a bachelor and a spinster, you melted my heart. And so I'm just hoping to see how that end is marked for uh, some of us here who wish so dearly that that statement <laughs> is a reality. Anyway, scandals aside, yeah, 
if you want to make your speech as interesting as possible, just introduce the word scandal, as Marion has put it there. So ladies and gentlemen, our next scandal as classmate is, uh, or graduate today is Rehema Zubei. <clears throat> Rehema is a student of life, like we all are, in psychology as well. Purple is a favorite color, though she also loves gray and uh, purple orange. She believes we all need that pop. She loves reading and writing and occasional dancing. Currently, she's exploring the art of coloring with the aid of books she received for her birthday. Rehema loves explorative learning. The fun factor is where the learning is. And as you can see below, we have samples of some of the links to Rehema's published works. If you can go to the Campus Lady, Resh Online blog, among others that we couldn't put the list here. However, ladies and gentlemen, a chance to hear the voice of Rehema Zubel. Karibu Rehema. Well, um, hi guys. I don't know if you can hear me clearly because I'm having connection issues. I see, um, what do I see? Uh, people are breaking up on my end, so I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, well, I haven't really prepared a speech, but uh, I'm going to flow with the, yeah. Um, so uh, I want to recognize my dad in absentia. He was to be here, but unfortunately, we had a death in the family yesterday, and he had to travel. So yes, um, well, I want to give my heartfelt gratitude to the trainers, starting with David Waweru, Kianji Kombani, Lucas Wafula, and Omo Ombara. And also, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to mention this, but Jackson Biko in absentia. I was looking forward to that class, but yes things happen. Um, also, my classmates, um, it's been fun getting to know you guys and read your works. And yeah, I looked forward to every Saturday um, <laughs> have sessions with you. It's it's been, a, it's been a journey, for lack of a better word. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to have my first online graduation with you. And uh, yeah, I hope we will write more and we'll be launching books from here on forth. So yes, thank you so much. Oh, and I'm also looking forward to being uh, the best representative you've seen. Yes, thank you. That's my acceptance speech. Have a good day. Wow. <laughs> even though, even though Rehema is trying to conclude the day and tell us, have a good day, <laughs> we still appreciate your words and, 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 and thank you so much and we hope to actually see you as the best uh, class representative. We are not having a good day yet because it's already going on and we don't want to conclude it because we still have Mr. Gutu. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Gutu, or Mr. Gutu as you always call him in the class because of the respect we owe to Mr. Gutu. He's a certified public accountant and a holder of degree of business administration. Together with his wife, they're blessed with uh, three children. He has always wanted to influence the world through his pen. He's determined to actualize this dream and live by the words of Henry Rollins that if I lose the light of the sun, I will write by candle, light, moonlight, or no light. If I lose paper words and ink, I will write in blood on the forgotten walls. I will write always. I will capture night all over the world and bring them to you. Ladies and gentlemen, poetic and philosophical, Mr. Gutu Karibu. As Mr. Gutu is trying to get himself ready, remember at some point uh, we had, Mr. Gutu, if you're ready, just unmute yourself and, and, and say something, then I'll notice. Um, in the meantime, also to appreciate everyone else who is joining us. I've seen the likes of Douglas, Annie Odeka, everyone else who is joining us at this stage, Karibuni Isan. Um, we had a moment for Anne, and perhaps if Anne is ready, I think this is the moment to say a thing or two about Anne. So we all said she's a young lady, definitely young, as you can see, and she wants to change the world through writing. She's also getting herself into the sphere of accountancy uh, in a very busy insurance environment, which has enabled her to meet and interact with a lot of people. 
And she believes that through these interactions, uh, she gets to learn. She also hopes that through writing, she will empower and even foster empowerment among the youth who she believes are the future. And of course, the youth are the future and even they are the present. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mburugu. Oh, yes. So, Anne, are you ready? Or did I just ambush you once again for the second time? And and do we have a Peter also ready? Uh, I mean, Mr. Gutu. So, as both of them get ready, we'll always definitely get going. Um, one of our classmates who didn't get a chance uh, to present uh, and, and to be present today and also to present is Simba Gulaid, as we always call him, that is Mr. Mohammed Gulaid. And so I'll use this moment uh, to introduce Mr. Gulaid, who of course will be my growth partner henceforth. <clears throat> Mr. Gulaid is the chairman of the Frontiers Counties Development Council, that is the FCDC, is a body through which lobbies for sustainable development in marginalized counties. Mr. Gulaid has over 20 years of experience in the development of issues in arid and semi-arid areas in Eastern Africa and the Horn of Africa. On a number of occasions he has won he, has, he was assigned by the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, that is the NCIC, to undertake peace missions among other uh, tasks in Garissa, Masabiti, Siolo, and Laikipia counties. Mr. Gulait is a member of the Sustainable Development Goals Platform, chaired by the CS for Health and co chaired by the UN Resident Coordinator, that is Satit Chate. Other than the advocacy, for good governance and equal rights. Mr. Gulaid is also a regular columnist in the daily newspapers here in the country. Historian Kodain, which we've also used as an example in this class, helped create nationwide awareness on policy change uh, in drug use and abuse in Kenya. He aims to use his writing uh, to steer uh, sustainable development and advocacy on important issues. In absentia, we'll clap for Mr. Gulaid. And also to let you know, and also to let you know um, that uh, as Gabriel had mentioned at the very beginning, uh, uh, that he is uh, in a location where he cannot reach um, um, uh, some of these uh, teleconference facilities we are using today, and so he was not able to make it to this class. I'm going through the list of participants and I can see a number of us who have joined. Thank you, thank you. I wish I could mention literally everyone from Anne Gatende all the way down um, to Wendy Ndaki. However, I'll just quickly move to the rest of my classmates who still had a chance to present. That is Mr. Ogutu, who I'm still unable to recognize from this list of participants. Um, and as well, uh, uh, was it Carol or uh, Miss Mburugu? In their absence, uh, we shall proceed. In their absence, we shall proceed. And this is what happens when you're MC, you have to improvise. Um, we've had uh, from uh, uh, the graduates, or in this case, uh, the students, they may be right or wrong, but who should be the judge? Perhaps it's supposed to be the tutors who have interacted with them through this session. So at this juncture, uh, with the guidance of uh, Mr. Dinda, I think it will be a great opportunity now to hear from our tutors who are present. Today we are represented by Mr. Lucas, who you've heard has been mentioned as very tough. And I will not forget, I'll not um, um, I fail to say that he was tough. And, and I'll not be polite about it because he was tough. Again, a very tough editor, and we appreciate that. Tough love for sure. And then also we had Miss um, Mwambara, we call her Professor Mwambara, who was also uh, very lovely and nice. And both of them being present here is an honor to us. And perhaps we'd wish that um, they get a chance. Uh, Gabriel, guide me, but as often for me, I always know it's ladies first. And, and any other thing that says men before perhaps is a fallacy. So, Gabriel. Yes, I think uh, we will go with what you know. So, ladies first. <laughs> so, thank you very much, uh, the graduates, for your time and for 
the memories we created in this class and the hopes we build for the future. I'm very, very happy to see uh, the other, the, the graduates of the other classes coming to join. This is a great, a great solidarity that we can come together and help each other and grow writing and um, reading. So uh, allow me to welcome Professor <laughs> Omua Ombara. Uh, thank you very much for sacrificing to be with us. I know now it is 3 a.m. where you are, <laughs> but we can see your smile and we can see your love. Thank you very much. So over to you. Uh, probably the, you know, you'd wish to share with the graduates and encourage them as they now take the pen to write. Everybody. I'm so excited to be here at your graduation and what a standard it is to be up at 2 a.m. in the morning hanging out with such great minds. <laughs> in Nigeria, when uh, a person who has a car meets another one, they ask each other, how is your car behaving? In Kenya, we say, oh, how are you? But in Nigeria, they say, how is your car behaving? So this morning, I want to ask you, how is your book behaving? <laughs> so I would, I would like to encourage you writers when you mm, meet, you know each other like as writers, you ask yourself, how is your book behaving? Because that will be a reminder, like, are you really writing or are you an usher? That's my favorite phrase. Are you an usher or a writer? Are you escorting people to their writing or are you part of the writing community? So I'd like to congratulate all the graduates. And uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. But um, one thing I'll remind you of is that uh, today you have it has been revealed to you the power of telling your own story, the secret of the power of telling your own story. And it makes you more empowered than the rest of the community. Because when someone else tells your story, they will never tell it the way you would. People create stories about others. People will create stories about you, but if you tell your own story, it gives you the power and nobody can take that away from you. I just wanna say that a uh, few tips, uh, do not rush your work, yeah? Because someone else has already published, don't rush, rush to publish. Uh, you want to bring out the best in you. So life happens in its own time and space. So do not rush your work. Do it, but do not rush it. One important thing here in the US is called showing up. It's not how important you are. It's not how great you are. You might be the best writer, the best speaker. You might be the best dressed, but what's important is showing up. Imagine coming to graduation today and nobody shows up. Imagine having a wedding ceremony and nobody shows up. One of the writers talked about writing being a marriage. Yes, it is a commitment. It is not how, how easy it is, but how committed and dedicated you are. So always show up for your work. Always show up for your story. Remember that. You're not showing up for anybody, but for your story. It's important. And then the other thing is remind yourself that you're writing that it is a legacy for generations to come. You're writing for your children and your grandchildren and everybody who will be born a hundred years from now. So it is a legacy. How do you want to be remembered? So when you put those words into fireworks, keep reminding yourself, I'm not doing this just for me, but for generations. I'm creating a legacy. And then be strategic like the squirrel. The squirrel, uh, there are a lot of squirrels in America. They're everywhere. I bet the, I don't know why they left the parks to come and hang out uh, around our houses. But whenever you look outside, there's a squirrel and they're always hiding nuts. So always keep writing, even in little bits, like always save your works for a rainy day. You might be saying something might happen, but at least have something in your soul. So always write ahead of time, always go the extra mile. So today is not really a class, but um, I want to say that you are your own best advocate. Tell people about your story. How do you do that? Uh, mostly by publishing. Yeah, it's important for you to publish. It does not have to be a big book. You can even start with a, a small piece. Publishing gives you an opportunity 
to go out and talk about your story. It gives you an opportunity to be invited to any part of the world, just as long as you are a published author. So there's a difference between a writer and a published writer. A published writer is called an author. So as anybody in the world can say, oh, I'm writing, I'm a writer, I'm a writer. Some people imagine they're writers and they're, they say, I'm a writer, but that published work makes such a big difference. I want to finish by saying that using a Chebis quote, he says, the lizard that jumped high, the lizard that jumped from the high Iroko tree to the ground said he would praise himself if no one else did. Have confidence in yourself. Yeah, don't say, oh, uh, people normally ask you in Kenya, the question I dislike the most, what do you do for a living? And writers and housewives normally say, oh, I don't do anything, you just write. Yeah, but housewife is a full-time job, just like writing is a full-time job. So be Iroko the lizard so that people know what you do. Don't be shy to just say I'm a writer because that is where you might get an opportunity. You never know who you meet. And then dress the part. Dress the part so if someone wants to invite you to Hilton or wherever, they say this is a, a representative person. This is someone I would want to show off to my colleagues or to my friends. Congratulations, graduates. I like hanging out with you at two in the morning. <laughs> because what a greater place to be than, as I said, in a circle of scandalous great minds. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> oh, scandalous. <laughs> Thank, you. scandalous. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's that's amazing and inspiring at the same time, and humorous as well. Yeah, and for those who have just joined, perhaps to let you know, I, I I think if if you're looking for humor, which is packed inside truth, then you should look for Miss Mwambara and even uh, her writings. Yeah, amazing, and somebody who is also very historical, it has very nice account of some of these African um, aspects of culture. We didn't know the bit about Nigeria and, and that introduces another thing. I think it builds on the, <laughs> on, on, on the notion that we have Nigerians always funny in every aspect. How will you tell somebody how is your, how is your car behaving? Anyway, <laughs> um, to the next scandal that you've been hearing most of the time, and, and you've heard many people say he's tough, um, ruthless, <laughs> I think you're going to be the judge. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, introducing uh, Mr. Lucas. Uh, clearly, I don't like addressing uh, scandals. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to, to you all. You know, it's not easy to go through a course. As Kimaru said, sometimes you are you are tempted to leave, especially when you meet people uh, who tell you that you're not so good and they make you better. This week, I was uh, privileged to read some very good poetry from a friend who I met through Writers Guild, Julie Girote. <laughs> she is an amazing poet. And uh, she had a session with me, which is interesting because she thinks I'm a nice person. And like this scandalous class, this scandalous class that thinks I'm not a nice person. The truth is, I'll be the one welcoming you and directing you either to go to heaven or to go to hell in terms of writing. <laughs> that is on a light note. Deke, it's really nice to see you. Joy, hi, uh, Mario. You know that was an amazing speech. Sharon, well done. You know, Griffins. I, I I was happy to have attended the session yesterday on Facebook. You were amazing. I liked your poetry and the way you 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 entertained us. I mean, this is not a scandalous class. This is an amazing class, and I'm so blessed to have been part of this training. I'm so happy that you guys showed up when you are supposed to, 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 to be criticized. You showed up 
when we were supposed to say some things that were not so nice. You are here because or you deserve it. And I want to tell you that in you there is a writer. As Prof has said, we'll be asking, how is your writing? You know, how is your writing? Not because you're just any other person. It is because you've gone through this and you have the passion to write. I have no doubt in my mind that if I meet Mary one of these days and she's a published author, she'll be up there, you know? I know that you guys are going to go far with what you're doing. All you have to do is to remember what we have been talking about. Uh, don't be afraid of facing editors. And right now you are prepared, you know? Uh, if, 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 if I read your work, or if I'm going to read your work, then you don't have to get worried anymore. Because at the end of the day, you are better than you were yesterday. So this week, I was reading very wonderful poetry uh, by Julie. And I thought that she is up there. But this morning, while listening to you people, I think you are amazing. I was listening to that speech by Kimaru, and I was like, wow. What do we have here, you know? And I can tell you this, that Kimaru, that is how you're supposed to write. That was well edited. Very good work. I would publish that, you know? I wouldn't really, I said you are a reject slick, you know? Though some people have been uh, hiding behind, behind the cameras, you know? I can tell you for sure that even behind that camera where you've been hiding, there is a lot that we have seen, a lot of development. But if you read through the comments, you'll realize that writing is not just about writing and reading and, you know, it's about friendships, you know? It's about friendships. And that is what this cl a class is all about. It's about friendships. It's about sharing. The, uh, the writer series that was uh, presided over by Chinua Achebe has created friendships that have lasted for years, for a lifetime for some people, you know. So I hope that we can be friends with all of you. We can help you to grow. This is only the beginning. You've been given the power to write, but you're only beginning. And so you go ahead, write, make sure that you get in touch with us. Let us read your work. You can be sure we'll not be, uh, we, we'll, we'll not be, we'll not be nice, we'll be brutal, truthful, and also help you to get better. But at the same time, we'll point you in the right direction. I'm so happy, I'm so happy, and I'm so blessed to have had a chance to interact with you. And I hope that we can interact even more and share more. See, when I'm told that when, uh, when our son grows up, when he's little, you know, the father holds his hand and, you know, tells him, oh, hi, you know, let's go this way, do this or do that. But when the son is mature, he, began, he becomes somebody, some sort of friend to the father, you know, and they can discuss and have all kinds of things, all kinds of discussions, say all kinds of things. And later on, it is the son who leads the father. So you are at that level now with prof, you can discuss at that level as friends, as writers, you can share and you can also criticize her, you know, but if you criticize me, I'll criticize you more. So don't do it, you know. <laughs> but really what i'm trying to say is that we are at that level where we can now share we are colleagues and we should be able to engage more and more and help each other grow i'm so proud of you well done well done congratulations to the class to the third cohort 2020 <laughs> Gabriel, thank you so much for having me as part of uh, as part of the team. I'm always happy uh, to support Writers Guild. Uh, I, I really feel like part of the family. But more importantly, I'm so happy to be part of the life of a writer in Kenya. And through Writers Guild, I'm sure we are going to have writers that are going to compete, to go toe to toe with writers from Nigeria, from Zimbabwe, from Uganda. These are people who are whitewashing us, you know. If you look at the people who are winning the, 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 the awards, you know, globally, Kenya is not represented. And I hope that in this group, we have 
someone who is going to take us up there and cause people to know that yes, in Kenya we still have writers and that we should not be worried about tomorrow because William Decker is there, Joy is there, Marion is there, Sharon is there, Grievance is there. You know, we have a, a, a crop courtesy of Writers Guild. So thank you very much, guys. And I hope to keep on talking to you. I hope on, I hope to keep on interacting with you. I hope to be part of your success story. And William, I hope that you will be on top of the decks. And I write something and send it to you one of these days so that you can correct it. God bless you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Let's give Lucas a very huge clap for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Lucas. You should have just been speaking like this from the first class, and, and we will have not introduced the one scandal on you. <laughs> thank you so much. I think what I've, I've, I've really loved the most out of the whole speech that I really love is, is that we are now colleagues, and, and so it, it's now a chance for us to help each other grow. And if, if we criticize you, you'll criticize them more. And that's appreciated because we also appreciate the growth curve, yeah? We are just being unleashed into the market and we know for sure at some point we need our hands to be held by someone to be held by you lucas to be held by me so to be held by our colleagues who passed through this class before and now they are published the likes of vera douglas etc thank you so much for that lucas and having mentioned those names i think it will also be a great moment to introduce and just to give a mention to everyone else who is attending apart from the classmates we know we have miss uh, and Gatende, who will have a chance to speak to us, Anio Deka representing the previous cohorts, Beatrice Wairimu, Brian Yagol from the Writers Guild Board of Trustees. Um, we have Colin Masaga, David Kimani, Douglas Logedi, as I've mentioned. And as I just mentioned their names, they should be perhaps ready, one of them, to volunteer and, and, and to say something on behalf of their colleagues. We have Fanon Kihu, um, uh, Shikanda Helen, who is also here, Julie. Mkirote, you're the first person I've had you, uh, Lucas talk so nicely about, so you're very privileged. Eh? Of course, he talks about everyone nicely, uh, but it's nice that he loved your poem. We also have Kimberly in Tiari. Um, we also have um, um, uh, Ngugi Karoki, thank you so much, and Karibuni Sana. Sam Jim, oh, you're also here. Eh? Manyasi Karibu Sana Vera. Thank you, and Victor. We also saw your scandalous comments directed to only one person in the group, but we appreciate you being here, Victor Diambu. Wendy Daki, Karibusana, uh, Wycliffe Mwiti. Thank you. And so at this juncture, may I invite anyone from the previous cohorts, uh, especially the first class, who would like to, 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 to volunteer and say something on behalf of their classmates and should they not volunteer <laughs> I'll, I'll volunteer someone yes okay let me mention again should they not volunteer then i'll volunteer either anio deka or beatrice Wairimu. yes on to you alphabetical order ani odeka uh, kindly uh, uh, say a word for sure. And there's anything. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, first of all, congratulations to the third cohort. Oh, I'm very much glad, and I'm very much glad for you guys. <laughs> congratulations, Sharon, Sharon Gwada, Griffin Sndine. <laughs> Those are my longtime friends, uh, and I'm so glad you guys have joined us here. Uh, first of all, I know it has been okay. It's not been it has not been easy for you guys during this period. Like we are fighting a pandemic, and you guys are achieving greater heights, and that's something that's a motivation for me, and uh, as well for everyone else, I guess. <laughs> and uh, also, I feel I feel like. Expanding the, the, the group is also making other people grow. Like I believe in, okay, there's this thing like it is said or I've read it somewhere that low roofs make your, make your thinking shrink and it suffocates your thinking. <laughs> 
yeah, low roofs suffocates people's thinking and widening the class feels like feels to me like my roof is being widened and my roof is being high the height of my roof is increasing day by day as as the group increases the roof increases too and i feel like i'm motivated to do more i'm motivated to think even greatly and even and uh, i'm motivated even more to write more and even motivate other people so thank you very much guys especially gabriel and uh, lucas and everyone else we are grateful and even as we continue to grow we ask you to continue working with us all through the way and very soon we pray that very soon each and every one of us will be having books so that we can also expand the greatness to greater heights yeah <laughs> thank you very much guys <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that, Annie. Even having ambushed you and then just taken it away. Uh, Beatrice, if you'd still want to add a word, you are really appreciated. Um, otherwise, I'd also wish also to invite uh, one or two people from the board of trustees that is either Vera, Douglas, and Brian. And the reason I'm having a chance to invite as many people as possible is because we are ahead <coughs> of, of the schedule. Yeah. So initially, by 10.25, we were supposed to be finishing with the last graduate, but we've already done that and even our tutors have spoken. So I, I see us moving very well with time. Beatrice, do you want to say a word? Um, if not, um, oh, thank you, thank you, there you are. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. I just want to congratulate the class. We being the pioneers of the class, we wish you well and continue reading, continue writing. Thank you. Wow, that is the height of short and sweet. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so we continue reading and writing. Um, Vera? Now this is your chance. So ladies and gentlemen, Vera represents the Writers Guild Board of Trustees. We'll have Vera, we'll have Douglas, and Brian Yagol. Okay, thank you, Deka. Uh, you know, I was planning to throw a tantrum for a cake, for a graduation cake, but when you didn't ask for my graduation speech, I remembered it's not even my graduation. <laughs> but I'll still, I guess I'll, uh, I'll still find the reason to eat your graduation cake on your behalf. Congratulations, guys. You know, the, the past, we had such a fantastic time for the past two classes that I thought, um, I was a little skeptical about an online one. Oh, Miss, Madam Priscilla, I see you, Miss Tangugi, Annie, Beatrice, Louis. Oh, it's been so long. Fanon, Julie, Kimberly, Kevin. It's, it's been so long and I'm so happy to see you. So I was skeptical about an online class, but you guys hacked it. I enjoyed your scandals. I'm sorry, I, was, I didn't ask for your permission, but I was listening in the background by default. <laughs> but um, you really had a great time, and I'm happy for you for all that you've learned and for all that you're about to do with uh, your writing. Omwa, oh, big C's, as I like to call you. How, how do you even sound that good at 2 a.m.? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the sacrifice. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Thank you, everyone. It's been nice to meet you. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vera. It's okay always to listen in into our scandals as, as long as you, you don't take it outside, yeah, because our scandals are our scandals. <laughs> and thank you, Douglas. Over to you, Douglas, and then we shall have Brian go. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Douglas Logedi. I'm a published uh, author. I would like to, uh, I'm the author of Chasing a Bullet, um, a journey through the life of a terrorist hunter. I'd like to congratulate all of you for this amazing, amazing step. Um, I've graduated once. Um, I finished my CP and then did not graduate. I don't know why those guys don't hold graduations because it would be really amazing to hold some. But um, I, I, I appreciate the sacrifice that all of you have made and the, 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 the steps that you have made to enhance yourself. As 
as you get into this very interesting market of, of, of writing, and um, it, it, it's a market truly really that has all the characters you'd be looking at, I'd like to tell you to be ready to, to, to support each other, to be consistent, to be patient, and also just to listen, because then that's one of the things that most uh, writers do not do very well. Listen to your editors, listen to your kitchen cabinets, listen to people so that they can be able to enhance and develop your writing. You're only going to improve as far as you are able to listen to um, people. Um, I'd like to encourage you to ch challenge each other, keep a close bond, because again, like writing can be a lonely journey. Um, when you are writing, you are basically probably, if you do it like I do, I do it myself, you do it at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Um, and spare a thought for Omar, who is uh, online at 2 a.m. But then that's one of the best times to be, on, to, to, to be writing. So it can be a lonely journey if you don't have enough support systems. So I would encourage you to also be there for each other, challenge each other, push each other to very good heights, because then when you push each other, a lot of good things happen. Um, you may never realize how, how far your, your limits can stretch until you are really pushed um, to, to, to do stuff. So try to challenge each other, try to push each other to the wall. Just don't, don't, don't break each other through the wall. You know, you, you make sure that the wall is made of uh, concrete and not uh, carton or card cardboard. You may, you may drop the other side. So once again, congratulations, and I wish you all the best as you get into this interesting market. Um, welcome, and let's, let's, let's write, let's tell our stories. Let's tell the stories that people are not willing to tell in a, in a way that people are not willing to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Douglas, for the uh, wisdom. I, I'm actually surprised. I didn't know your wisdom can span this huge. Eh? And that's an uh, election. No am, sure. am I supposed to be happy about that or am I supposed to call that a scandal? <laughs> <laughs> it's a scandalous class always. Douglas Loget is the author of uh, Chasing a Bullet, a very amazing book. If you want to get a copy for sure, you may reach out to Douglas. And Douglas, perhaps on the comment box, you'll also share uh, with <clears throat> the participants where they can access uh, uh, your book. Um, next, then we shall have Mr. Nyagol, who I can see is very ready, very, very ready. Karibu, Brian. Thank you very much, Rekha. I hope all of you can hear me clearly. Uh, my name is Brian Nyagol. I'm the CEO of Brainverse Technologies and uh, part of the Writers Guild support team. And uh, I'm happy to see Mr. Lucas here and some very many people that I know, including you, Rekha. It's been a long time. I can't believe we are staying almost in the same area, but we've never seen each other for a year. <clears throat> but um, I thank God that you are here and alive. <laughs> yeah, so um, I feel almost uh, not able to make a comment on your progress because I'm not a writer. Well, I'm not a writer or an author per se, and uh, I even don't know how I found myself in Writer's Guild. But I believe that having been around in Writer's Guild since the very inception of it gives me a better... Um, you know, a, a better capability of commenting on, on this. And because it's because all of you that are in this class are products of resilience and hard work. Um, and I would really be cross with you if you drop it, right? We, um, uh, Gabriel and, 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 and some of us have been on this journey for a long time, trying to put structures, trying to put things together. The things I can remember about Writers Guild are things that have given me strength and that have given me um, uh, some of the things that I have in life. So I would like to say that you are, like your, your graduation today is a product of hard work that was there before. And what it does to you, it, it gives you more responsibility of going on with this hard work. And I would be very annoyed, uh, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, with any of you if you drop the road. You know, in like, that, I, I don't know how it's called, but there's that, uh, that, uh, athletics game where people where you run and then you give someone else a mantle it's like we're giving you the mantle to run for the next um, you know, the next century so if you drop it you will be failing us so I do hope that um, uh, that you guys don't drop it and pick it up like that and build something greater I think I know all of you can build something even bigger than writers guild and uh, as you are building that please hold the hands of people who are coming after you because they will depend on you for their success as well like you i believe that you guys are now successful people if you don't define this as success please you can go uh, probably get some, some other dictionary and put it there this is actually success that i can see and uh, let's not take it uh, for granted you guys are if you are speaking in the same 
level as professors and uh, you know uh, uh, heads of big publishing companies this is success i mean this, this is success for me i never i didn't think i'd ever meet someone like uh, lucas and uh, I, I met him through this so this is really success for me and um congratulations congratulations they normally say you now have the power to to to, to write and uh, please make use of it uh, it's given to you just make use of it some of us don't make use of our powers to read and write after after campus but this one you must make use of it because if you don't it will be to your own detriment right uh, so let's get to it congratulations again and uh, thank you very much for being part of this <laughs> Thank you. I only to mention the scandal that is going on on the sidebar there, but because um, I would ask, yeah, is the apostrophe necessary? Anyway, <laughs> after Douglas. Thank you so much, Brian, for that, and, and and also for the loads of wisdom, and 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 for saying that it's it's a success to meet Lucas. Yeah, I'm rediscovering it's actually a success to meet Lucas. <laughs> I can see Griffin is bringing glass my wall. This is actually my glass wall. That actually, this is my office. So I have a glass yeah. wall in my house that I use for you know doing all the kind of writing and all that. So Griffin's, you can have one as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing. Um, so Moa, before we proceed, is it necessary to add um, apostrophe after Douglas and then add an S again and then now uh, what's the exclamation? Just, just, just clarify that and then I'll invite Patricia to say a word because we've been with her in this class and it would be amazing for her to, to say something. Yes. Professor. Okay, you laughed it away, so it's fine. <laughs> That's a blue tick in terms of conversations. Um, no, I said so... I'll, pass that, I'll pass that to Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, over to you. Yeah. Uh, That's a challenge is... with the people who have a nest at the end of their, of their name. Lucas, no, is it necessary to add an S after Douglas? I said you really enjoyed Douglas's speech. And of course, Brian's. I uh, added an S after Douglas. Prof, don't mind William. You know, you know <laughs> MCs are the only people who normally tell others that take a short time and they take longer. So it's all right. <laughs> Okay, shots fired. So, so, so <laughs> I regret having initiated that. <laughs> anyway, um, as 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 we wait to hear uh, a word or two from from Patricia, who was also a great classmate with us here. May I also recognize that we also have representatives from the second cohort. So, if you can see on the uh, participants list, we have Julie Kinoti, Fanon, Walimungigi, David here, Kimberly. Uh, and so I don't know if any of them also would like um, to say a word um, on behalf of their class. Any or all of them, <laughs> but any two will, will be nice. Yes, as they prepare. So Patricia, over to you. Um, so Patricia has been the administrator of this class. Um, um, because then she has been part of the scandals within. I think she also uh, might have had um, a few observations or, or something inspiring to just uh, uh, tell us. Patricia, I know I didn't prepare you to say something, and so I'm ambushing you. But it is what it is, man. Everyone can get it, and so you also get a chance to say uh, something. Okay. Blue tick there. So, um, someone from, from 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 the second cohort, and and I'll be happy to volunteer. Ah, Patricia is here. Patricia never disappoints. Karibu. Uh, so, Patricia, is it just me, or everyone else can't hear you? Can we all hear Patricia? Hello. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Perfectly now, yes, proceed. Yes, we can. Okay, so I came with family here. Oh, wait. Oh. 
um, they, they really don't know what is going on, but I'm sure they'll say something small. Bella, you do want to say something? Come here, come here and say hello. 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 Thank you. That was something small for sure. Hello. Okay. Now, let's continue. Uh, I don't have much to say. I'm happy everybody's graduating. And um, accountability is one thing that um, I'll talk about. It's not just about the graduation. Uh, now you have the power to do everything, to write a book. And you have to go out there. Now you have a growth partner. You can go and do more in terms of writing. I'll be here to help, to guide whenever you need help. You've done well. Uh, if Lucas was here and Lucas managed to make you this strong, I'm sure you can handle anything else. Thank you so much for, uh, thank you Writers Guild. Thank you Gabriel for being there. Uh, I also want to say thank you for the for all the trainers, Waweru, uh, Kombani, um, Grace, oh, not Grace, Professor Omo Umbara, Grace was, thrown away. Lucas, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to, to also thank you all for not dropping out of this class. I thought after Lucas, everybody is going to drop out because uh, I sent the email in the middle of the night and um, so many people didn't reply the next day and I was worried. Thank you for keeping the spirit and for going on despite everything. And now we are throwing you to the world so that you can write your stories and I hope to read more from you. All the best as you go out there. Do well. Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> and, and yes, for sure, you've been the best a course administrator will definitely ever wish for. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sharon, are we not? <laughs> yes, yes, Ngugi, yes, from the uh, previous cohort. Karim. Yes, yes, you, you are hearing me. Hello, you're, very you're well. hearing me? Yes, we can you're hear here. you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, good morning. Yes. Good morning, good morning, Mr. Mugi. We can hear you. You can just proceed for sure. Thank you. Okay, okay. I, I want to greet all the graduates of today. It is very reassuring of the fact that... Uh, generations and the generations as they keep coming then writing will go on uh, i think that's one of the the good reason of being in a in a situation like the new generation here because like children are born in families in the country then we are sure that the profession will go on i want to underscore the role of a writer in a society at the turn of the millennium, William Shakespeare was voted the man of the millennium. But what I have discovered of late is the fact that we could not have had Shakespeare if we didn't have somebody who was simply a clonkler, somebody known as Plutarch. This is the first person who was a biographer. And he wrote a book known as the lives of the noble Grecians and Romans. And it is from this book that Shakespeare actually derived all his writings. And that book had been written nearly 500 years before Shakespeare. To me, this is the oldest book I have read so far. I'm giving you this story to show you the importance of a writer these people who capture the aspirations the movements the life the despair all emotions of life within a generation and then they pass it over to the generation coming today we can be able to vicariously live with the people who have been there before us simply because of the writings that we have inherited. So the people who are graduating today, like we graduated ourselves 
in February, we need to know that we have a job to capture the experiences of our people today. For example, to capture the tribulations of the corona pandemic in an artistic way and then pass over these experiences to the people who come after us. This class that is graduating today, at the peak of the corona, you have a responsibility, just like we share with you. And I want to congratulate you and remind you of the fact that this tradition of graduation is a challenge. It is the beginning where once graduated, you go into the world and you write or fail to write. That's the challenge. So we need to keep that fire burning. Let us share our experiences with the people who come after us. Let us chronicle. I know, I know Oreso Inca doesn't like chronicles, but clunk, uh, chronicling or recording history, experiences of people is as good as any other writing. And I believe that from amongst our group, this kind of people will be available. I wish you success. I wish you all the best and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that, Mwale Mungigi. That's a lot of wisdom uh, and, 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 and sharing as well. Yeah, wonderful insights. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Santi Sana. Um, after Mwalimu, I don't know if uh, perhaps one or two more members of the previous class. I can see Fanon is ready. Yes, Fanon. Yes, uh, I want to talk about, uh, okay, my name is Fanon Tihu. I was a member of the previous cohort, and I'm the founder of Economy, which is a peer review journal. So I congratulate all the all the the graduates. Today I want to talk about, you know, the power we have within ourselves. Uh, you know, among the, the the earliest civilizations of the world uh, was Egypt, which was, uh, you know, about three thousand years even before Christ. And uh, what I can see is that Egypt being the, the earliest civilization, we, we, we can as well say that writing but it began in Africa. So I think it is important that we realize that, that Africa is very powerful in the sense that uh, even the writing itself began here in Africa. Of course, we had, uh, we had the intellectuals like uh, St. Augustine, who was also an African. So among the earliest uh, intellectuals in the world were Africans. And that's when now the Greeks came in, and the uh, Romans, as uh, uh, my, uh, my f uh, fellow intellectual, uh, Mr. David, has uh, just mentioned. And uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, there's a the power in saying, I don't know. There's a lot of power in saying, I don't know. Because you can see like uh, Socrates, who's among the greatest thinkers of the world. Uh, just arrived his knowledge from asking questions. So I think as writers of this generation, uh, uh, of, of this time, what we, ha what we can do uh, for Africa and for ourselves is to make sure that people ask questions. That's the first agenda. You know, make sure people ask questions and realize the power within us, which was, uh, which was washed away by Europeans and, uh, and Americans. Because you can imagine by the time Egypt was the earliest civilization, uh, Europe and USA were nowhere to be seen. So we now, we now went from Egypt to uh, Greeks, uh, then Romans. Then now Europe came at around 1500 uh, AD. Then now we have come, they, they washed away everything, uh, took credit for a lot of work. And now we are, we are talking about a situation where they are the, uh, they, they are the leaders and now the US is now the, the power. So we have to realize that Africa was also a leader. It was a global power at, a, at some point. So uh, the more we make people ask questions, the better. And we have to document uh, what, we are, what we are doing here in Africa. For example, if, even start with the music, the culture. So I think we have a very great, uh, we have a greater role as writers today to develop issues about our towns, our cities, 
uh, this is the time to stop talking about Netflix because writers are the backbone of, uh, of, our, of, of even film. Because for film to, to be, for you to film uh, something, you have, it has to have been written. So you can already see that even the, our film industry is relying on us. Uh, our scholarship is relying on, on, on writing. Uh, our history, you know, we have to document about Nairobi, you know, document about all the, uh, the cities, Eldoret. We have to, to even document some of the works uh, by, by our even leaders and so on and so forth. So I think this time around we have a greater role and uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be among writers. And uh, what I can say is that we have to be proud of ourselves and realize the power in us so that we can move forward. So with those uh, few remarks, I'm happy to have spoken. And uh, I congratulate Mr. Gabriel Dinda and uh, the uh, Writers Guild platform at large. So thank you very much. And congratulations to the group. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for being happy to have spoken because we are happy to have listened to you. And, and thank you to everyone else who has spoken in the second cohort as well as the first cohort. Fanon, just over to you that um, somebody requested, I think that was Douglas, requested if you could share uh, the name and possibly the link to your journal so that they could also have a read. Um, we also acknowledge those who have joined us along the way, the likes of Lillian Mwikali and everyone else. At uh, this juncture, perhaps the moment uh, some of the graduates have been waiting for, uh, I'd like to hand this over to Gabriel uh, to introduce to us our chief guest today, and also so that we can also hear the words of uh, wisdom that she has along. So, Gabriel, this is your cue. Uh, thank you very much, Banadeka. Thank you for being a very responsible firstborn. Eh? You are graduating, but still you, <laughs> you have a duty. You are given duty on the day you are graduating. Today, you should have just been sitting pretty and just enjoying your time. But uh, we are grateful that you've taken up the role <laughs> and uh, steered us very well. Thank you all. Uh, we were discussing with Deca early morning today whether we should call this a commencement speech or if it is something else, because it was the, the program was not allowing it to come at the beginning, <laughs> because the the you know our guest would have wished to listen to the graduate speak before she speaks. But here we are, and thank you very much uh, for your time for keeping it very short. So now we will have a time for our guest, our special guest for today, uh, Madam Anne Gattende. I don't know if she's able to mute, to mute, unmute uh, before I introduce her. Uh, well, as she's unmuting, you'll get, you'd wish to know her eh? because the choice of our guest and the second class cohorts remember this. Uh, we were to have her to address us in the second graduation, and I think even the first. <laughs> yeah, we the choice of her is very strategic because she deals in an area which potentially is the future and this will be captured in her speech so as writers how can we position ourselves uh, mr kombani mentioned it a bit but probably uh, Anne will elaborate it more get to uh, listen to her and what she's done so Anne Gatende is, a, is passionate about creating movement of digitally empowered citizens through virtual learning solutions where she's the executive director um okay okay uh, so i'll just introduce her then we'll be able to coordinate she's she's just trying to unmute her mic um so virtual learning solutions is an education social enterprise based in nairobi Anne has a vast experience in supporting institutions and organizations to incorporate the use of IT in teaching and learning as one of the ways of empowering communities, um, as one of the ways of empowering communities and organizations. She's just trying to unmute and uh, we'll have her shortly. Before joining the development world, Anne worked extensively in the academic arena in various capacities as for, uh, at the former Inorero University. Anne has helped 
uh, has completed Microsoft Teaching with Technology program and is a 2014-2018 Microsoft Innovative Educator, MIE expert. She's the first recipient of the current 2018 Microsoft Certified Education, MCE. I think Deca can greatly relate to some of these terms. Um, virtual learning solutions targets business professionals as well as uh, in and out of school, youth, and uh, uh, second generation learners, those who are learning uh, to use technology to propel what they are doing. Uh, virtual Learning Solutions is a Microsoft Global Training Partner, a Microsoft Imagine Academy, and NITA, National Industrial Training Authority Accredited Training Institution. So she has used the, the platform of Virtual Learning Solutions uh, to empower people. I, we met, uh, I think, three or four years ago in Strathmore, and at one point she came to John Kaheni residence and gave a speech on 20, 21, 21st century skills, which I think she's going to cover today also. So uh, just as she's, oh, she's joined, and I hope this time she gets it with the mic. Yes, she's on. So over to you, Anne. We are very glad to have you. We still have the memories of when you last uh, addressed us at John Kaheni residence. We've never forgotten that speech. And here is your chance. <laughs> yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, wow. <laughs> I feel so amazed and overwhelmed by you and what you have achieved. I want to start by congratulating you most heartily for your achievement. Um, well done. Your, your speeches have completely inspired me. Your teachers, Gugi, Lucas, wow. Um, I think, Dida, you have sold the class to me. I might become a, a, a writer. I, I know I like to speak and lecture and talk, but uh, I'm so impressed by what I have heard. And um, as somebody has said, my speech has already been made actually by all of you because what you have said is really what is on my heart and um my heart is with you it's beating with you it's resonating with you for what you are doing for our country and our continent and our world and uh, as um as gabriel is saying we met at um at an event a women's award event and I asked a question about the role of technology and where technology, uh, the role that technology is playing among the youth and digital literacy and skills for uh, the 21st century. And he followed me around um, saying that he wanted me to say more to the people that he was reaching concerning what I was talking about. So I am very passionate about this century, which is the 21st century. And you need to know that the 21st century is almost a quarter century old now. So as we are thinking that we are millennials and um, we are in the beginning of the century, we are already in 2020. So the century is already 20 years old. And that should be a bit of a wake up call for us to understand that there are critical issues that were there at the turn of the century, like let's say in 1910, 1911, 1912. If my grandmother, who died at 116 years, had not run away from home and learned how to read and write, I would not speak, be speaking this fancy, fancy Kizungu Mingi I'm speaking right now. I'd probably even have died because my great grandma, my grandmother, who's my children's great grandmother, lived for so long because she adjusted herself very quickly in 1915 to go to school and do something very different from what was going on around her. And so we need to think very, very sharply and aggressively about the time that we have been born in and the things that we are doing in that time. And I really like what Ngugi Karoki said just now about capturing capturing the time. 
being there in German, they call it Zeitgenoss, the contemporary time. And so we need to be alert. We need to be awake to the fact that we are living in a time called 2020. And that what we have to do and say is what is going to inform what the others do and say going forward. And so it's not a joke what you're doing, this writing that you're doing and this work that you're doing during a pandemic, which by the way, you should be capturing very seriously about, because people are gonna want to learn from us what we did when we were faced with a newness of life and a newness, a different, a disruption, a change. So we are living in a disruption. We are living in a change. We're living in a time called the early 21st century. We are being called, we're gonna be called the early fathers and mothers of the century. And so what exactly are the issues of the 21st century? What are we dealing with? What are we struggling with? What, what is the century um, grappling with? And so you, as a person who is sharpening yourself, what are you gonna contribute? So it's not about you sitting there feeling depressed, not knowing whether you should write or not. No, you should be upbeat. Can you imagine we are graduating online and somebody said five, seven months ago, you would not, eight months ago, 10 months ago, you would not have thought of doing anything like this, graduating online. This is a song I've been singing for the last 10 years that we need to change, that we need to adjust, that we need to think about using technology. Tech giants are the ones that are controlling economies. Of the 50 largest economies in the world, only 10 or five are countries, the rest are corporations. So if corporations are the ones that are dictating where the world is going, what is your place in it? What is your role in it? As a young person growing up at this time, it's not the time to get depressed and get worried and get afraid. It's a time to say, what will they remember me for? And so these are the issues. We are grappling with issues in the 21st century. What are they? Have you thought about them? Have you thought about what it is that you need to write about? What change will you make as we enter the next phase? What will you do as it were we're almost a quarter way into that century. What studies are we, what strides are we making as a country, as a continent, in relation to solving some of these very deep problems that we are going through? Issues such as global health. That was an issue that was supposed to be a futuristic issue. Boom! Corona. It hit us faster than we could think. What about digital technology? Look at me how I was like, oh my goodness, I need to um, restart my browser. I needed to restart my browser because I didn't put my mic on at the beginning. So I didn't test the mic. And so there I was having to restart my browser. And just as I'm being introduced, I go off. Huh? Tech, technology. Technology can whip your nowhere. You know, it can mess you up or it can build you or you can run away from it. What are we going to do about technology? Tech giants are controlling our world. Aren't you afraid of artificial intelligence? Do you think that the AI is watching you? Do you know that the AI is watching us now? What are you thinking? What are you writing? What are you investigating? Which AI is watching you when you're sleeping? Which artificial intelligence is watching you? Google will tell me, oh, I've seen where you've been. You've gone 2,000, 20,000 kilometers in the year 2019. I'm like, I have? Can you imagine my phone has been spying on me? Like, really, guys, we are in a time that is totally fascinating. What about conflict and violence? What are the issues around that? Somebody is very passionate about gender, the inequality of gender, inequality of race, climate change. Do you know one of the big issues of the 21st century is Africa in the 21st century? What do you know about Africa? Do you know what the Congolese youth are grappling with right now? Do you know? Do you know? Are you aware that the Congolese youth want to um, sign a petition in The Hague 
to have Leopold and his whole family uh, tried for crimes against humanity, that they want their country back. Do you know that it only takes three, um, if you fly to Kigali in uh, an hour and a half, it will take you three hours from Kigali to Goma. Do you know that you could be in Congo in like four hours? That's as long as it takes to go to Kisumu. Do you know that when you go to Congo, you will be surprised that the rocks they have that they use for paving is marble? Do you know that they use marble to pave their just their 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 grounds, like their gardens? Did you know that Congo has a population of 89 million people? Are you interacting with any of them? Do you know anything that's going on in Zimbabwe right now? Are you alert to Africa? Africa in the 21st century is actually an issue. Are we going to be part of it? I'm shocked to hear that we are being beaten. Kenya has always assumed that it is ahead of everyone. But we've gone into something called Kenya centricism, where we are so focused on what happens in Kenya that we have lost sight of the others. What are the other people doing? What are the Ugandans doing? So the 21st century has its challenges. What are you thinking about those challenges as a person born in that century, living in that century, influencing in that century? How are you going to go down in history? Are you going to go down as a father or mother of the century? Or are you going to go down as a person who was not known or who started, who had the opportunity and squandered it or didn't do anything about it? Or as Prof is saying, Prof was saying, Prof Omwa, she said, how da body? You know, that is what the Nigerians say, how da body? That is how they greet. How da body, what does that mean? How is your body? And you know how they answer? Da body is in clot. That means my body is wearing clothes. So, hey, I'm cool. I'm wearing my clothes. Nimeva. Leo nimeva. Niliamka nikava. So, si niko saha. How da body? Da body is in clot. How's your writing? I love what Professor asked that question. How far are you? Where are you? What's up? What are you doing? Are you getting overwhelmed by the challenges of the century or are you going to tackle the challenges of the century so what are the skills that are required for the 21st century have you thought about them do you know that there is such a thing called the 21st century skill do you know that these skills are skills that we are supposed to have that we are supposed to be good at are we even alert to them what are they do you know that collaboration is a 21st century skill? And it's a skill that is supposed to be helping us not go back into war because the 20th century did not stop us from going into war. Do you know that? That we did not stop fighting. And so we need to learn how to collaborate. And so we talk about going into what we call the blue oceans of collaboration and get out of the muddy, murky, bloody, dirty waters of competition? Are you swimming in the blue oceans of collaboration? Who are you collaborating with? What is that skill called collaboration? Is it just what the artists call collabos? Or is it a collaboration for real, where you are not moving until the team moves? When you say that you're a team of scandalous, the scandal, the scandalous people, how are you collaborating with each other? How are you working with each other? Because it's going to be about lifting ourselves and each other. I have asked you about Congo. Do you know what Congo is grappling with right now? Do you know what Uganda is grappling with right now? Do you have Ugandan friends? Do you have Congolese friends? Do you have Malawian friends? Are you, do you, are you learning Portuguese so that you can talk to Angolans? Google Translator is there. It will help you to talk Portuguese. So, hey, let's look at ourselves as people who collaborate because collaboration is a 21st century skill. So let's get out of the muddy, bloody waters of competition. Let's look at the global environment. 
but the global the global environment is also very competitive so how do you deal with what is competition what is collaboration these are words we need to ask ourselves what do they mean what about communication skilled communication we need to have skilled communication that is multimodal we call it multimodal communication it means that you don't just use speech you don't just use you need to understand how do i run a zoom how do i run a teams how do i talk to people and i congratulate you very greatly gabriel for running an online graduation yay you're my guy this is the way to go this is what we are supposed to be doing can you imagine that we can talk to each other? You don't know me, I don't know you, but here we are together in an online graduation and we feel so connected. So the global environment is highly connected. And so let's take advantage of that connectivity and connection. La, um, what's his name? Guled was not able to come because of the challenges, but did you see the Google balloons? Can somebody write about those balloons and find out, can they reach Garissa? Can they reach him? Can, we, can he attend a graduation? What is this thing called the digital divide? We are divided digitally, like a nonsense, like we are really divided. And so you have a class where half can attend and the other half can't attend. How are we dealing with such issues? Digital technology. What are the issues of digital technology? That's a 21st century skill. Are we really improving on, our, on that? How about knowledge creation? Knowledge creation is a 21st century skill. You are the gold miners of the 21st century. You who is developing knowledge in a knowledge economy means that you are going to trade in knowledge. All roads lead to libraries and chronological chronolizers, the people who bibliograph, the people who write, the people who capture the time, the people who ask questions, the people who write about those questions. My goodness, you are the millionaires of the 21st century, the writers. So, hey, what are you going to do about knowledge creation? It's a skill in the 21st century. So I congratulate you for going through a knowledge creation class during a pandemic. You are surely the survival. Like my grandmother, Shoshoroda. Shoshoroda was a survivor. She lived 116 years into the century. Can you imagine? How many years are you going to live into the century? So you have to stay healthy. You have to stay knowledgeable about health. You have to stay alert to health issues and global health issues. You have to capture, as uh, Dr. Ngugi was talking about, capturing the time of the virus. What about this corona? What is it? What, what do we know about it? Okay, so the knowledge, knowledge economy. It's a knowledge economy, so we have to create knowledge. Writers are knowledge creators, so this is the time to do it. So there's collaboration, there's skilled communication that is multimodal. There is um, an, an, an use of technology. There is knowledge creation. There is creativity. Um, the four C's of 21st century. Just look at the 21st century skills. It's a very, very big topic. It's like you can even do a PhD on it. And there is um, creativity or creation or innovation. And then we have self-regulation. Think about how you had to do this course alone. You know, there was no going for tea, tea breaks at Strathmore downstairs with the noise. You're there with your computer by yourself. And so you have to have a skill, a higher resilience, a higher mental capacity as a human being in the 21st century to be by yourself with all knowledge and information available to you. And to be able to steer that to a completion and to actually graduate. That is a great achievement, to graduate in an online course, in an online graduation, somebody who has completed, and no dropout means that you are the people with the mental health and mental skill and mental strength that we need for this country. You're the warriors. So take yourself as such. Do not consider yourself a, a wimp or a person who is going nowhere, or you're just an anonymous writer, excuse me, you are the gold digger, <laughs> so to speak. 
You're the people who have the gold in you. The people who have actually learned how to dig this gold, you're the miners because you're able to go into your mind and find those thoughts and put them in order and take them out. That's one of the hardest things anybody can ever do because the thoughts go all over the place, as we know. Try dreaming and see where your thoughts will go. So how do we do this? The business of the 21st century is called the business of doing well while doing good. Doing well while doing good. So if you are looking at this as an endeavor that is economic, you need to see the economies or the monies around this as smaller than the good. Because if you do good, you will do well in the 21st century. That is why we have a social enterprise. That is why we do social businesses. Social businesses where we look at things that are being driven by our passion. They're being driven by our heart and not our greed. So we have had so much greed around us and we have seen the fruit of that greed. We have seen it and it pains us every day. It is something that hurts us because we know that it brings the divide between the rich and the poor, where the rich have so much and the poor have nothing. We cannot go into that place. We have to do work as people who are driven by authenticity. What is in your heart? Can you be your authentic true self to yourself? And money is a byproduct. So the you that comes out on the other end is this warrior, is this powerful person, is this father of the, of the 21st century, the mother of the 21st century, who, by the way, becomes wealthy as a result of it. Not that I go looking for money and this is a hassle and then I make, I write because it's a hassle. No. Right, because it's your passion. So let's have values. Let's have ethics. Let's not be driven by the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. And I want to end with the curse of Nineveh. Have you heard of the story of Jonah in the Bible? Jonah was told to go and preach to people who were going to be destroyed by God. And why were they being destroyed? Because they were a city. Nineveh was a great city. It was a great country and they had so much power. Very much like Kenya, it was a place of meeting. Many, many people met up there. And what happened to the Ninevites is that they forgot who they were. They stopped being patriotic. They stopped being interested in themselves and their country. They stopped hoisting their own flag. They stopped being patriotic to their country. They lost interest in going to war. And so when it came to being, to being counted to go to war, they refused to go to war because they did not love their country enough. And so they were overtaken by the Assyrians, overridden. They were finished. And the last gates of Nineveh fell in 2019. It was still a country in northern Iraq, still a city in northern Iraq. And it has completely been destroyed, completely. There is no history, there's no mention of that city anymore except in bad-ish light. They don't even give, the museums don't even give a budget to Nineveh to restore it. They don't even fight for it anymore because the owners of that city were not patriotic. They did not love country enough. They did not love themselves enough. They did not understand themselves. As a result, they were taken over. Let's not be taken over by self-love. Let's not be taken over. The curse of lack of patriotism, the curse of not wanting to serve humanity. History will judge us harshly if we don't change within in order to make the change without. 
let us make the change within. Let us fight for what is inside of us. Let us put it out there. Let us collaborate with others. Let us open our minds and our worlds to Africa, to the world, the globe. And let us make the difference that we should. I congratulate you, I congratulate you, and I look forward to seeing you as great warriors of this country. I love you, and I thank you so much for doing well while doing good. Excellent. Well done. We love you. Thank you very much, <laughs> uh, Madam Anne Gatende, for challenging us to do well while doing good and reminding us of the skills that we need in 21st century. You know, sometimes we always think when it comes to technology, then it's more relevant to engineers or ICT developers than it is relevant to writers. Um, even when it comes to 21st century, which we many people predict will be technology driven. We think that we don't have a place in it as writers, but that is the, the, the exact opposite of what you've just told us. We should be able to think of ourselves uh, as right in the middle of it. Uh, think of ways to collaborate, to communicate uh, effectively, to innovate. Yeah, so you've reminded us of things that we should hear at this moment. <laughs> I see, thank uh, yeah, thank you very much. I see uh, Lucas says he's ready for collaborations and Prof, well thought out and researched speech. Thank you very much, Anne. Thank you for the challenge. Indeed, so much to read after that speech. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes, now I give you the power to read. <laughs> do the, all the upper things and have enough, you have enough research now to do um, about what is going on. You need to be stimulated, you need to be, and I really look forward to this class becoming way bigger. And um, I do not want us to go into the shame of Kenya centricism. Please yes. let us go into uh, African patriotism. Let us go into being Pan-Africanists. Wallace Shoinka, um, people like Nelson Mandela. It was the vision, Jomo Kenyatta, Kwame Nkrumah. The vision of Pan-Africa is what drove them become the greats that they do. So let's become the greats of the 21st century from the great continent of Africa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us the power to read and the power to write. <laughs> uh, I would really wish, I know there could be feedback from the, the, the audience or the writers. You know, feel free to engage uh, Ms. Gatende. You could ask a question or make a contribution or, you know, share uh, something that you relate with from what she shared. Uh, this is your chance to have a word with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I consider this informal and formal in that way, because in the 21st century, we don't have too much formality and we speak from the heart. So let's speak from the heart and let's let's be authentic to ourselves. and other. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So anyone would wish to engage her or uh, maybe respond to some of the ideas that she shared? Joy, I can see you're very thoughtful. <laughs> um, I think Ngugi is raising his hand, so maybe you can engage him. Yes. Um, uh, Mali Mungugi, you may feel free to just speak. <laughs> Hello, Malimungugi, you may try to unmute. I hope you're not having trouble. Are you hearing me now? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, I'm saying I'm very impressed by the ideas that have been communicated to us uh, by Madame Anne Gatende. Today, uh, I belong to, or uh, well, let me say, I'm a historian myself. And as you are aware, history has to do with the past. But today, we are more concerned with the history of tomorrow. 
and there are a few historians who have actually started writing history of tomorrow. I'm very impressed by the fact that uh, Madame Anne Gatende has actually touched on those ideas that we consider the agenda of the 21st century. She has talked about artificial intelligence. She has talked about intelligence that is spying on us, intelligence that can be able to know how far we have traveled, things that we people don't, are not concerned about, intelligence that can actually tell us even what we are thinking. It has gone that far. Then what that means is that the writer being the most sensitive point of a society, of a community, of a country, then we got to train our brains on that agenda that Madame has told us. Thank you very much. I feel very impressed. Thank you. Let's ponder it. Those are just <laughs> thoughts thrown out there. So, hey, grab it and let your brain play with it and see where it will take you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Malimu. Uh, yes, uh, Bana Lucas, your chance. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not about to start editing her her speech eh, because it was <laughs> it was really great, you know. And uh, you know, and uh, Gabriel insisted that I should meet you, and I can see why. You know, <laughs> that is the is it was. I, I heard that meeting you is knowing people. <laughs> so hey, <laughs> I need to know people. <laughs> you should. <laughs> And I've also added that uh, that meeting me is success in its own way. So now you exactly. Know. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I want to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> but really, um, thank you very much for 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 that wonderful speech. And uh, I think the most important thing that you've really touched on is uh, the 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 twenty first century skills. And one of them that is very important is collaboration. And I think. It is evident from what we are having here is the, uh, that collaboration has created uh, writers' guild and the classes that have been there. You know, I think Gabriel has been very good at this, uh, and I think he, he must have listened to you very, very keenly. That is why this has been ongoing. And so I want to encourage all of us to collaborate because you have something that I don't have. And uh, you know, I'm told that a uh, collaboration is the new innovation. Yeah. So I think let's all keep on collaborating. You are a writer, you need a publisher, you need a, a marketer, you need an accountant. All of us have something that we can contribute towards uh, building another person, you know. Yeah. And I think we should move away from using your words, Kenya centricism, you know. And I just wrote there that if you are thinking about Kenya, then you are thinking about your village, because that is the problem with Kenya. You know, you 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 tend to, or we tend to, to 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 wrap ourselves in ourselves. You know, we don't move away from ourselves. So what you know is what you have always known. And I think collaborating with other people in Uganda, in Tanzania, I, I happened to, 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 to speak to someone in, Zim, in Zambia, work with them, and then that person connected me to somebody in Malawi. So we are working with somebody, and now she wants to start a publishing house in Malawi. So really, collaboration is very important, especially uh, for, for these uh, wonderful writers that we are having here today. I think it will be very important for us to collaborate. I talk to Brian all the time, you know, and Brian Yagol has very interesting ideas about technology. Uh, I have no idea. This is now confession time, guys. I have no idea completely about, uh, about technology. So if you want to harm me, please go there. And that is why Brian is so important to me. Now, <laughs> then now I'm having Anne, you know, you know, then I'm having uh, Gabriel, you know, and then I'm having Rehema, and then I'm having Joy, and then I'm having Sharon. William is there. Really, what can stop us? So collaboration is the new innovation, and thank you for bringing, uh, bringing it out. And thank you very much. Wonderful speech. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> I'd like to hear from the young ones. The young ones. Young <laughs> ones. Tell us something. <laughs> we always wanting to hear from the young ones. They listen and listen and listen and they, oh, they, they talk listen, to each other. They only listen so and they, they only comment listen. online. They comment online. They only listen and hammer you. Now Caroline is very happy that I have let the cut out. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering where, 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 where does the age of young ones end? Uh, whether some of us are still young. <laughs> but, um, Everybody I, here is young. I think Douglas had that yesterday uh, when, uh, when, when uh, he was presiding over a very, very interesting uh, collaboration. <laughs> I, guess, uh -huh. I guess that was. That was my way of hijacking William Decker's uh, session and becoming an MC myself. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about what I've, I've, I've listened to as Anne was speaking. Um, it speaks to a lot of things that I've, I've, I've been really uh, talking to people about for, for a long time, trying to put um, things online and trying to develop our own our, our marketplaces. And I, I, I agree with, with, with Anne in terms of uh, Kenyans having um, been stuck in their own bubble because we, in, in, in almost all sectors um, of our economy really, we have uh, been, been, been so, so, so immersed in ourselves that we, we've lost sight of what's going on around us. Um, those of us who are in this class and work in manufacturing, you will, you will think that Kenya is probably one of the biggest manufacturing uh, destinations in Africa. But you've lost sight of Ethiopia and, and how, how fast Ethiopia is, is, is coming after us. Um, those of us who are in, in energy, you'll think Kenya is very good in energy. And compared to Nigeria, we are, we are actually very good. But then um, you, you've lost sight of Egypt, you've lost sight of Sudan and what they are doing. And, and, and you look at even Ethiopia. Ethiopia are now building one of the biggest uh, electricity generation dams in, in the world, actually. So, we, we, we have to think about what everyone else is doing in terms of uh, our collaborations. There's somebody who has been, um, for lack of a better word, ranting online about a certain um, publication that did not have any um, article from Kenya or any, any, any writing from Kenya. And I've been following it silently. And um, one of the editors said uh, that uh, because I read a lot of Kenyan books, because I travel to Kenya a lot, then I'm Kenyan, uh, although I'm Nigerian. And Kenyans were slating him on, on, on Twitter so much. Uh, I'll find the link and publish it. We have to start thinking about quality, not just from a Kenyan point of view, but from a global point of view. Because again, what, one of the things that has made um, China the, the preferred country to hate in the world, uh, people like to hate China right now, is because the Chinese just discovered the concept of quality. And they discovered quality is not Quality is not static. Quality is a moving target. And Kenyans, in terms of our, our, our art, in terms of our writing, we need to start thinking about quality and define it in an African context. Because if we do not define a quality of our writing, then our writing is always going to be defined by somebody outside of us. Um, about 80% of our history is not written by ourselves, and about 60% of our history is there for life. Um, so it's, it's very hard for somebody to come and tell you how your body is feeling if you don't tell them. That's why however sick you are, however experienced they are, they might have got straight S in school, but when you visit a doctor, he still asks you, how are you feeling? Because the doctor, how, however intelligent he is, he cannot tell you how you're feeling. Um, you can only tell your story from yourself. So we need to start telling our stories better, and we need to start learning about quality and, and invest in yourself, guys. Um, it's, 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 it's a very, a very sorry, sorry situation where we know what to do. We have the will to do what we want to do. We have the intention to do what we want to do. And Kenyans have a hustler mentality. So we really, we really go for it, you know. But then we reach um, the, 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 the athletics field and you realize you are just not prepared for it. Your body is not prepared for it. Your mind is not prepared for it. You've not invested in yourself. Um, Invest in yourself, teach yourself things. There's what, the, the biggest university in the world right now is the University of YouTube. Um, it, it, it has almost all the knowledge you need. Um, it, I mean, you can teach yourself 
really anything just by opening a browser and 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 even touched on that it's yeah. technology there is a school of and life the school of life on <laughs> the school of life is the biggest kindergarten in the world <laughs> it, it it teaches you all the basics you need to survive in this life you know so learn learn to invest in yourself and and, and i really congratulate the, the the those of you graduating today because that's that's a step in investing in yourself that's a step in trying to make yourself better. That's a step in trying to to put yourself out there. Um, lastly, uh, uh, again, I'm an MC, so if I continue speaking, I can speak for the whole day. But then, lastly, um, there is there is there is what I call the crisis of shyness, and it's it's you know you know that point where you always need validation from outside yourself, or you you don't quite think. You are well enough. Uh, you, you're good enough. If I sat you in a room um, full of Indians, um, and you know we were supposed to learn and write code, I do not know how many of you would think that you can write the best code in that in that in that class, because you go to uh, and, and and I interact with a lot of people from New York and and, and um, the Southern states in the, in the United States, and they say that Indians are controlling all the tech. Um, sectors in that in, in that part of the country, and even the Americans themselves are not happy about it. Indian imports are so uh, they, 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 there's so much of them in that in that part of, of the country, and you, you you look at it and you wonder, do you believe you are the best? You can only know how good you are if you put your knowledge to test. So the, the information that you're having in your head right now, what you've gathered from this class, will be useless if you do not bring it out of your head. That's precisely why the symmetry is very rich because people just don't bring knowledge out of their heads. I don't know why whether that is one of the reasons why people are so depressed because they don't they don't bring things that are you know, your brain gets clogged at the end of the day. But then you have to learn to put your knowledge to test. So if you have a story, if you have something that you need to tell the world, and you always have a story because there's always stuff happening around you. Put it out there. Let the world judge you. Let people judge you and tell you how good you are. You will be surprised at what the world thinks about you. You'll be surprised at what everyone else thinks you can do just after you, you do it. No one will ever elect you president until you, your name shows up on the ballot. So stop telling us that people don't read until you put your work in the market and it's actually not read. Try yourself out. Put yourself in the rest because... There is no one who wins the rest without being on the track. So thank you very much, Anne. That was very powerful. Um, and, and, and I'm really excited about what, what the 21st century holds. Um, and and it's, it's 20 it's, it's, it's percent gone, but then um, we still have an 80% to, to, to grapple with. And the problem with the 80% is that it's moving faster than the, 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 any, other, any other edge that you've had. Um, just just two or three years ago, email was one of the best modes to communicate. Now we are having video conferencing. Video conferencing was an alien idea over a year, just slightly a year ago. And right now it's the in thing. So really we think globally, think think futuristic, and we, we are really going to have fun. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. I think, Deca, William, would you like to say something? You've been sort of. <laughs> I was just throwing scandals um, on the group, and, and for sure, having listened to everyone else give their feedback, for sure, I'll definitely recap that it's actually nice hearing from you and letting us know that we have to be the warriors of the 21st century, for sure. Um, I think you can mute Victor. Yes. Yes, thank you for his art. Um, yeah, and, and, and the one thing that, that uh, stands out for me yeah, is, is the aspect that you mentioned, we really have to let go of the cause of lack of patriotism. Yeah? You arrive at JKIA and, 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 and you become a Kenyan once again, you start criticizing everything. So you arrive at JKIA and, and the taxi cab, the taxi driver who picks you, he start telling you about every bad thing about this country, what's happening wrong with the politics and everything else. And then we always call it, that's now Kenyan, yeah, being Kenyan. And, and for you now giving us a new perspective that this is what we need to let go of and look at the positive side of things, yeah. 
And also other thing that actually stood out for me eh, is, 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 is that big word, eh, the buzzword, eh, now as going out and being uh, gold diggers. For this class that we love scandals, that's an amazing word to use, but uh, looking at it that we have to now become more aggressive and, and picking on the words of literally everyone who has spoken after that, yeah, that we won't uh, be on the, win the race if at all we 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 don't get on onto the track, yeah. And and thank you, you've given us a lot to, of things to read about. I've listed all of them here. Maybe I've captured uh, most of them. Now I think I really need to actually read about uh, Congo and, and know what's the problem with Leopold, yeah. And and and. Thank you, thank you so much for that. And I, I think we would have not had a uh, better guest of honor today than you, thank you. Much appreciated, thank you. I'd, I'd just like to say, um, I was very inspired by your talk and um, I think what I've gotten from it is we need to see what issues are going on around the world and address them based on our own passions and interests. As you were talking, I actually wrote down, you know, some of those things, climate change, environment, environment, um, renaissance of Africa, there's a global spiritual awakening, there's, you know, there's repatriation. So there are so many things happening around and I, I I think we should definitely tap into those topics with the ones which call us the most and write about them and yeah and just cement be be a reference point so that when people are looking for this information later on in life they will find it with us whether in our books in our websites because of course technology is is a big thing um, yeah, so I've, I've gotten really inspired to create content around the topics which matter and um, and share it and people will, the right people will respond to it and will appreciate it. So thank you. Anne. And hopefully 500 years from now, you will give birth to a Shakespeare. I mean, can you imagine how amazing that was? So yeah, we can keep talking about this. I don't know, it needs to go back or something, the time issue or whatever. Maybe I just need to drop the name Decca and, and you people just put that Shakespeare after my first name, which now you know is William. Thank you. <laughs> but really, uh, Gabriel, maybe just before you go, yes, uh, I, I like what Joy has said and I want to challenge her now that she's a writer. You know, the whole idea of repatriation, repatriation Oh, somebody can tell me how that is said. Lucas with an apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've always, I've always uh, tried to challenge writers. You know, look at what is happening in America right now. We are talking about Black Lives Matter. Now, they, they, their ancestors were people who were forced out of this country, of this continent, to the West, to the US, wherever it went. A few years ago, until they started now uh, stepping or uh, uh, kneeling on, on on our necks, you know, everybody has been fighting to go to the U.S. You know, everybody has been fighting to go, to go to Britain. Everybody has been fighting to go to Italy, and many many people have died in the Atlantic. You know, you, people people drown. Now, I've always I've always wondered what the ancestors that resisted would think of those people who are drowning to get to Italy, to get to the UK. You know, people are, people are freezing in cold, cold chambers. They, they are dying. They, all they want to do is to get there. So you as a writer, can you imagine that your main character is that ancestor? that resisted slavery, and now he or she is watching these people who are fighting to go to that place that they resisted. And eventually, somebody kneels on their necks. That is just something that I want to throw out there. Somebody who wants Shakespeare to come after the William. Sit down and write a story 
about what is happening vis-a-vis -vis what happened. And that is how then we will be writing uh, the history of tomorrow, today. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Actually, you've, um, now that you've mentioned that and it has made me think, I didn't th look at it that way, that at some point, uh, when we consider ourselves modern at the time and everything around us appears to tell us so, but now we are fighting to go there. But the, our great-grandfathers who are not modern were comfortable here and they were okay here. They knew so, better. Yes, <laughs> I look at that contrast wow. and it's disturbing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, sorry. I love Please the global. Ahead. I love the global concept that Anne brought up and Gatende, mm. and uh, the Kenyan centrism keeps coming. It keeps running through and through, and I hope this group of digitalized writers will change that trend. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, Kenyans think that us here in the U.S. are having it good, you know, and uh, do not like us in a certain way and also expect some dollars from us. But there's some reality, some traumatic experiences on the ground that unless you live here, you will not know. So I am married in a black American community. And the things that I see, I'm even scared when my husband has to go to the shop or leave the house and come back. I'm not sure that he'll come back alive. Yeah. Just being black and being a criminal by being black and tall and, you know, fitting that description of being a black criminal. So they have certain challenges or even afraid that he will be locked up for no reason. I'm not sure he's coming home. And every uh, black American is afraid for their child, whether male or female, that they'll either be locked up. The, the, the prisons here have more space than any hospital. They have the biggest prisons. They keep expanding and building prisons every day. Like it's a structured thing. So if I have, if I had black kids with an American husband, then I don't see a future for them. So just bringing that out to Kenyans so that they know that even the Kenyans here are having a very different. It's not all a bed of roses. And then you wonder like. Why did I come here? Why, why does everybody want to come here? I wish they would come here and experience it. But since not everybody can come and experience it, I fail as a writer to bring that out in a book, you know, to bring them my world here, you know, and live, you know, so that they get out of the Kenya centrism and just uh, have a taste of the global world. I did, I did love that. I just wanted to add on something. Uh, yeah, when, you talk, uh, when you talked of collaboration being the new innovation, and I thought this is more of becoming more human uh, because it means dropping the I and embracing the we. And for me, that means you need to get the human side of yourself. Then you talked a lot of so many things because to me, collaboration also means making peace with fellow men in making peace with nature. And there's a poem I wrote uh, back then and while you were speaking, I was thinking about it and I thought I should just read it. So please that, please. yes, please, thank you. So uh, I wrote this as lines of gloom and it's called Tears of My Father. So someone stole my father's crops. He woke up in the morning to find his chamber empty. He told me he knows the man who stole from him. The man and his family were very hungry. The man has children who look sick due to hunger. Now my father is the hungry one, yet he toiled. He too has children and a wife to feed. As a Christian, what should my father do during this pandemic? Should my father run to the government? Which government? As if that was not enough, a leopard came. It drank the blood of all the chicken. It left lifeless bodies in the compound. My father is a sad man. I give up. I leave it to God and to nature. Before I give up, I told my father to make peace with the man and make peace with the leopard. I told father these times are hard. This time a thief could just be the right one. These times it's very sad to call someone who steals vegetables a thief. It is very hard to call someone who steals crops a thief. 
In short, it is very hard to call someone who wants to feed his or her stomach a thief. It is very sad. It is very sad. This saddens my father more. Very sad tears. Very tricky times. Make peace with the man and make peace with the leopard. So I just shared this point because uh, as you were speaking, I had a lot of Ubuntu in your, in your speech. And I thought this is something Africa lost. And you see, during the olden times when we had our grandfathers, they collaborated in such a way that no one could suffer from hunger. If your neighbor was suffering from hunger, there's a way that the community provided. Along the way, there were food stores that people could get in and eat to their fill and not carry it because somebody else would come back and eat. And this was a way that our fathers collaborated. And that touched me so much. And I thought I should share that point to see what we lost and to see how we can come back to that. Thank you. Well, I think the thoughts can continue to stimulate, but uh, that was a brain teaser and a stimulation of your thoughts and your minds as young African authors and um, to bring out your sense of patriotism and love for country, God and nature and fellow humans. And um, that is what is gonna be your, um, the, what is, that is what is gonna make you money actually. <laughs> because um, artificial intelligence and machines are learning. And so what is gonna become rare is humanity. What is gonna become commonplace is machines that know what to do things, how to do things. But humans who know how to talk to each other, how to love each other, how to connect with each other, that's going to be the rare thing. So we need to cultivate it. And I agree with you. But um, I think MC, please moderate this because we can go on forever. It's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. I, I think for sure we could continue and continue. And you know, writers are people who have lots of thoughts flowing in their minds and given a chance they could speak the whole day. And being that we are a forum now of writers, uh, I think that process can go over and over again. Um, however, also to acknowledge that there's been a lot of stamina. We started at around nine and there are people who even joined early from 8.45. And so having that stamina to sustain three hours of teleconference, that's amazing, yeah? And, and so perhaps that starts hinting at a conclusion, yeah? So as we near the end, um, maybe I'll, I'll take it back to one just to say one or two. And then before, after that, I'll hand it over to Gabriel. But before I give it to Gabriel, I'll also give a chance so that we just hear the voice without uh, saying much, just saying hi, because I know there are a number of us in the platform who will have wished to speak. And even other members in the group ask that you speak, the likes of Wendy or Lillian. I'll just let you say hi, you unmute. So I'll be calling names, and then you just unmute and say hi, and then that's it. But now, and over to you, maybe some parting shot from you. Anne Gatende? The chief and guest. Me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I did my speech and I thought I said my parting shots and I just gave people the chance to, to feed back into it. Um, I think uh, we have uh, started the conversation, as I said, we have started to think we have started to stimulate ourselves out of, uh, um, somebody said this is the not the end, but the beginning. And so as we begin the next step, the next phase of our journey, let us think about our context. Let us think about our time. Let us think about our positioning. Let us think about where we stand and what we can do with what we have. And let's also think about history and the future and how it will judge us and how it will look at us and what it is that we will be remembered for. So that would be my parting shot to myself and to you, writers and me as an, as a, as an entrepreneur and a social entrepreneur and a person who is um, pushy and excited about uh, everything um, <laughs> that I am passionate about. I would like for us to grab the passion and move with it and run with it and see what we can get out of it. So all the best, congratulations to everyone. And um, I look forward to more collaboration and more doing more things together. God bless you. Wow. Uh, thank you. 
uh, why well, not the bit of the time for me, we will have done some uh, stylish cl uh, clapping, but then we know there's always latency. So if I told you what to clap and then there's that difference, but thank you so much. Yes, you've done that. <laughs> I will do it again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and, and for inspiring us a lot. I think you've really challenged us and you've given us an opportunity to begin reading immediately after this and then also proceed into writing. Um, may I let Wendy, Victor, uh, there was um, Kev Gundis to just say hi. So let me start, James at the top there. So let me start with Wendy. Wendy, just unmute and say hi. So I'm starting from down here going up. Hi everyone, um, I'm glad to be here. I've received a lot of uh, insights uh, from the speakers and also from the students. And uh, it's, uh, it's been lovely spending this few hours with you. I've uh, written quite a lot, uh, so I have, yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing this and reminding myself about this amazing uh, tips we've received. So thank you for the invitation, Joy, and congratulations to all the graduates. Yes. Thank, thank you. you, Wendy. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much. Um, Sarah, do you want to say a word? Just a hi, and so that we get to hear your voice, Sarah. And then after Sarah, I'll proceed um, to, yes, Sarah, first of all. Sarah? Sarah Mudoni? OK. Um, Kev, Kev, are you there? Gundis? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I ambushed a, a number of you, yeah? That's okay. Uh, Koliman Masiga, I've, I've seen this account has been one of the most active from the time we started. Just say a word and mute and, mute and, 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 and say a word, yeah? And, and thank you so much for being the whole time. Oh, thank you. Okay, the mic. Uh, I don't know if your mic is is, is muted. Okay, okay. Mm, eh, the mic, I think, may have an issue, but thank you so much. Oh, there you are. Okay, hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, I was not able to give a presentation, but uh, I would like to register my appreciation to the Writers Guild and uh, everyone who has had a chance to give out very informative nuggets. God bless you. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for your participation and being with us the whole time. Really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> they, oh, okay, Kevin, I can see you, Kev, there. Yes. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to. Uh, be part of you in this graduation. Uh, congratulations to the scandalous. Uh, I'm uh, so, so, so happy for you people. Uh, please uh, continue writing and reading. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. And, and, and that will be it. Thank you to the rest of the class. Uh, may I hand this over to Gabil uh, for uh, concluding remarks. Unless somebody has something that is burning uh, that they cannot hold their peace after this if they don't say it for sure. Uh, anything burning? Okay, literally nothing is burning. Uh, so Gabriel, I, uh, this is where I hand it over to you. Thank you very much. I think uh, before I say anything, I would wish to ask everyone to help me thank Decker William. You no, know, Decker is, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's, he should be graduating. That means he should, he should just be seated pretty like all of us, but uh, he took the role and he has helped us through this session. So you could help me clap in this manner. <laughs> Are you able to see? <laughs> I'm told that is the 21st century clap. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know why it was not included the in the... Of the people who do not have a voice. Yes. <laughs> when you're muted, when you are yeah. either deaf or muted, you clap yes. like that. Yes. <laughs> so it should also make it to the list of the 21st century skills. Huh? <laughs> Thank you very much all for your time. The graduates, congratulations once again. And 
as uh, let's keep writing and reading more. Thank you very much, our guests, uh, Mr. Wafula, uh, Professor <laughs> Omua. You've spent, you've not slept today, yeah, just because of us. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. We still remember your class and all the things that you shared with us. Thank you very much, Madam Anga Tende, uh, for, your, for reminding us once again of the things that we need to fit in the 21st century. Thank you very much to the Writers Guild team that was here. I saw Patricia. I don't know if she managed to say something, but she's really been caught to this course. She's the one who has been keeping us on toes and reminding us of everything that we need to do. Thank you very much, Patricia, and uh, the rest of the Writers Guild team, including Douglas Lugedi, Brian Yagol, Vera uh, Bonareri, and everyone who has made this uh, a success. I'm really grateful, and I hope that with this, we do our little thing to, to change the story, so we can be able to tell our stories more, write more, and write our history, even the history of tomorrow. So with this, uh, and having been given the power to read and write uh, by our guest, uh, Anne Gatende, you are now good to go. <laughs> and uh, hope you, you see the, the to read. You get the power to read and do all that pertains to that qualification. Yes. <laughs> Thank so I suppose much. writing would be the qualification. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I wish there was a way to, you know, to hold their heads digitally, maybe to hold the screen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, it we is have very virtually held their heads. Their heads ah. are virtually held. Okay. <laughs> so you have the powers. Eh? You, you have all the powers. You we really should look forward to some two books that I would wish to mention that is a product of this class. Uh, we are looking forward to a book by Pro Professor Omua Ombar, God's Child on the Run, which is currently being published here in Kenya. <laughs> so just clap for her in advance, eh? <laughs> because uh, we will all ask you to be part of the book, uh, the book launch committee, and we will brainstorm together and and tell the story. I've finished reading it this morning, and I tell you, it is a book that is worth your time. Then uh, we also are expecting, uh, probably in a month, a book from uh, Julie in Kirote. <laughs> she was here. I don't know if I am not able to see her, but let's clap for her in advance. <laughs> uh, she's doing a very, she has done a very nice, well done book. Ah, yeah, 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 she's here. <laughs> yes, Julie. Yeah, so we are expecting a book from Julie. I wish it was, did, Deca, did we hear from Julie? even if it is just saying hi. Unfortunately, we didn't hear from Julie as much as Mary Kinyanjui as well. Okay. Julie, if you, if you are able to, we would really love to just hear even, because last time we graduated and you were given the power to write and you have written and now it is almost out. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's awesome being here today. Congratulations to the class of uh, June 2020. And um, yeah, just to encourage you, take advantage of the guidance, the mentorship, and the networks that have been offered by Writers Guild Kenya. I attended the class in February, and as Gabriel has said, my book is uh, being published uh, with the help of Writers Guild. So it's been awesome it's been an awesome journey and i wish you all the very best thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah so we look forward to your book and when it is ready we will let all the incubates know and we will be with you as we launch it and as we read it and as we criticize it and as we learn from it and i hope we learn from this so that we also take advantage of put to practice what we learned in class Okay, so that's all from me because I see we are already four minutes past the time we promised. So again, I'll ask, unless there is someone with a burning thing, eh, and I've not seen smoke in my laptop, but if there is so someone with a burning, uh, then we will just hear from you, then we go. 
Kimberly, I saw you unmuted at some point. Um, there's nothing burning to say. I'm just really excited to be here and really excited to look at the new, the new people who are now our friends. I'm so excited to read your work. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Okay. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Uh, Lydia Kimani was telling me the other day that she was just going through profiles in Upwork and she found your name as one of the top rated writers in Kenya and she was she said you are too modest so <laughs> I think we need to clap for you digitally for that eh? <laughs> okay so thank you thank you yeah uh, thank you <laughs> all right so thank you very much Deka uh, now you have all the rights to close close shop <laughs> thank you all I'm, I'm just wondering if everyone has received this and they have it there with them. Um, yes, I can see Rehema looking for her just behind her. Um, oh, thank you. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Wealth. Yes, Joy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, Sharon has gone to look for us. I don't know whether to wait for Sharon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'll ask all my classmates and graduates today to unmute when sharon gets here we are all going to say thank you at once yeah uh, because besides receiving knowledge from this class yeah now we are going to be knowledge creators as Anne had already given us that buzzword uh, we, we we received a number of things some of us received very nice gifts i won't show you my book but yeah i received a very nice gift there that is keeping me busy already um and, and also to mention a very special mention that some of us even got um scholarships to have this class eh? partial and full scholarships and that's something we don't take for granted and, and thank you so much so my classmates are you ready then we're just going to say one two three thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's my end. And thank you, everyone, for staying all the way. I'm looking forward to engaging much more. Uh, let's stay active. Let's keep in touch. Um, we have the WhatsApp group, and perhaps we're also going to have more forums to keep interacting. I believe the end is not this one. This is just the beginning. So let's engage more. The buzzword we've been told is collaboration. So for sure, let's collaborate. We have one each every, each and every one of us now has a growth partner who is an accountability partner, but doesn't end there. We have the chance to collaborate among us ourselves and even with the previous class who have been introduced to us here. Thank Thank you so much. Santi Sana, Gabriel, yes. So Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, and all the best. So I'll just ask the, the previous class, the graduates of 20, uh, last year, December, and then the graduates of February to remain behind just for 10 minutes to just uh, keep it, um, you know, to update each other. But every other person, thank you very much for your time and all the best in all you do. Let's keep talking in the platforms that we have. Uh, for these graduates, there is something, one more thing we have for you, which we will send you on one day. So all the best in all you do, and let's keep writing and let's keep reading. Yeah. And let's keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so guests, it's not that we live at our own pleasure, it's compulsory that we live, uh, so that we <laughs> live. <laughs> the other class. So, so thank you, yes, I'll just unmute and Asante sana, Kwaheri. Bye. Bye.